Thomas Payne, Thomas Payne, Thomas Payne, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin. These men spoke up for what they thought was right. From their courage came such documents as the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. From their willingness to speak what was sometimes unpopular but right, we enjoy such liberties as freedom of speech, the right to keep and bear arms, and freedom of religion. There are those who still wish to oppress our freedoms, and there are still patriots willing to stand up and defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Men like Zeb Bell, who honor our founding fathers and what they stood for. It's now time for Zeb at the ranch, speaking up and defending your freedoms. Brought to you by Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers and all of the other great advertisers on the program. And now, Zeb Bell. Old age. Old age. Here's a story. After a long day on the golf course, my old friend stopped in at Hooters to see some friends and have some hot wings and drinks. After being there for a while, one of my friends asked him which waitress he would like to be stuck in an elevator with. And my old friend told them, the one who knows how to fix elevators. I'm old, tired, and look for a bathroom often, and I have to walk the dog at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Old age. Good morning, everybody. Here comes Kate Smith, and God bless America. Followed by a patriot with our Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I'm Zeb Bell. I'm Zeb at the Ranch. And, of course, we're brought to you by our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you, along with some of our great advertisers that include, of course, Lease Furniture Floors and More at 459 Overland and Burley, and our friends at Western Way Services, always at your disposal. Get on the road service today. Get rid of your garbage. Call 734-6969. Oh. Old age. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Feeling old. You don't walk the dog at 4 o'clock, do you? <laughs> mm, no, but she gets me up at 2 o'clock in the morning to let her out. You've got a dog? I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. I thought you had a kitty cat. Well, I've got four of those. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> but my, old, uh, my older girl, uh, Shelby, she's the dog. She's about 10 years old, and so she needs to go out often. Is she the, um, oh, the wrinkled dog? Yes, she's a pit bull sharp. Yeah, that's what I thought, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wrinkles. That's what a good name for her, wrinkles. Wrinkles. And, yeah, it would be very fitting for her, too. Yeah. It really would. You could pull out her skin, and, and it, it, swear to God, it would stretch for a mile. Well, now, wait a minute. Are we getting personal here? <laughs> no, not really. Not too personal, anyway. Okay. <laughs> hey, I don't know what changed, but if you could give me a little bit more gas in the ears, I'd appreciate it. I, I'm having a real hard time hearing this morning for some reason. Okay, I can do that. Uh, I appreciate it. Hey, do we have a pleasure? It's me or Michael. Oh, you do a great job. Go ahead. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, and right now it is time for the weather forecast, and we're going to listen to MichaelRogersWeather.com, brought to everybody by Cheney Flooring and Home Design at 1228 Oakley Avenue in Burley, and they're having a great big back-to-school sidewalk sale this week, all this week, and you better get in there to enter to win a back-to-school gift basket that includes a 30-minute massage gift card from mom and school supplies and discounts on bedding and throw pillows and picture frames and all kinds of great things. Stop in there and don't forget to schedule a free in-home home design consultation. Oh, ho, ho, and sign up for the free do-it-yourself classes. All this kind of stuff is going on at Cheney Flooring and Home Design, 1228 Oakley Avenue in Burley. Look for the blue door. Right now here, Michael Rogers Weather. 
Again, shower is still in the forecast, 82 for the high, 61 for the overnight low. You're not going to come out of it until Saturday. Enjoy the weather. It's the only weather you got. Wow. I mean, wow. Uh, is he there? Has he been there? Did he leave? My goodness. Thank you, Michael. Appreciate it. And don't forget Cheney Flooring and Home Design, 1228 Oakley Avenue in Burley, 678-6945. Bringing you the weather. Oh, my. I don't even know where to start this morning. And calls are welcome and appreciated. We've got a lot of things to talk about. And uh, so, again, six, uh, four, three, six, two, two, four, four, one, eight, six, six, nine, two, seven, four, five, eight, seven. Um, quick note there is going to be that uh, Jerome County Fair team open tonight at the Jerome County Fairgrounds. Sign up at 6 30, rope at 7, 3 for 20 drop pot, enter up to six times. Dave Zanino, my old buddy, putting it on. And it will be very good. You can bet on it. And we'll have the uh, report on that tomorrow morning. Hey, Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley, 6780459. They've got everything you need electrical. And you know they've got all your air uh, filters for your air conditioning units. You know that they've got the cord ends for every piece of equipment that needs power. And you know they've got the rubber cord, the fuses, and the light bulbs. They've got everything you need. Call ahead, 678-0459, and uh, they'll have your order waiting on the counter. Mm -hmm. And don't forget, write down 911, September 9th, 11th, Patriots Day, and hats off to farmers. We're going to be doing a live remote over there. George Mass is going to be cooking breakfast early in the morning at Ramsey Heating and Electric. That's at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley, where they always provide warm winters and cool summers. I don't know what to say. Honestly, America is really in a tailspin right now. Words are hard to come by. Now, you can sit there and you can listen to the newscasters. You can sit there and listen to the opinion people. You can sit there and draw your own conclusions. But right now, uh, in everything involving America, we are in a tailspin. Ferguson, Missouri had another night of rage and fury, another police confrontation because some very stupid people threw a water bottle filled with urine and hit the police and then everything kind of escalated from there. And it's got to stop. It's got to stop. And how much? Let me ask you this question. I know that we have a lot of former police officers listening out in the audience. How much do police have to take? I mean, there is such a fine line and such a minuscule amount of time that they have to think through a situation, react to a situation, and then, then have to suffer the consequences. I have had many, many policemen on this program, both locally and nationally. And I sit there and marvel as to how they can possibly adjust their thinking to the situation to just a snap of the fingers and live with that decision. Now, I was absolutely appalled yesterday, and I'm sure you heard this, that some of these same, and I classify them as stupid people, back in Ferguson, Missouri, and I said some, again, I did not encompass everyone, but some of these same stupid people back there, and the main agitators as to who is causing all the problem back in that area, are calling for a day of rage. That's what they're calling it. A day of rage in other cities. Why? Why? Common sense says that we need to sit back. We need to realize and understand all the facts of the shooting of this black teenager, Michael Brown, a huge hulk of a young man. We need to sit back and wait for the final evidence and then let legal options prevail. 
but to create all these days of rage and the fires and the looting and this mess that's going on. America is being torn apart. And it could honestly happen here in this area. We're not immune to it. We can't be naive and say that it won't happen. It could. Uh, I just don't understand why. And, and the stupidity of some of the people like the governor of Missouri. I mean, my goodness. Coming out and saying some of the things that he said uh, in regards to uh, a condemnation, basically, of the policeman and demanding a vigorous prosecution, those are his words, before we really know what's going on, when we have a complete dissection of all the information and we've got two sides split right now on how the information should be presented? I'm worried. I'm really worried about America. And there's another story that we're going to talk about in a few minutes that's even more scarier for America. Your thoughts are appreciated. 436-2244-1866-927-4587. Well, I'm waiting for your call that I know is coming in. Don't forget a big thank you to all the 4-H'ers for your business. From Valley Wine Home and Ranch, 910 South Oneida in Rupert. Mm -hmm. They say, Mandy says over there, hey, thanks an awful lot. You folks have been great. Uh, we enjoyed visiting with you during fair time. And uh, thanks to all the 4-H'ers for all the business coming in and getting all their equipment, all their buckets, all their feed, all their clothing, all their boots, everything, all their health supplies. And, of course, you know they've got all your dog and kitty cat food. And right now, take a break. Take a break. And get in there and check out their great big fishing supply department. Oh. Lay on the shore, soak up some rays, catch a great big lunker, yes siree. Go fishing. They got all the equipment. Valley Wide Home and Ranch, 910 South Oneida in Rupert. You stop in and see those good folks today. Okay? Got you covered on that. Oh, and by the way, I want to remind everybody, uh, Denny's Restaurant, 611 Overland and Burley. Number to call, 678-8786. Why do you want to call? Well, just find out. You know, Hey, can we have a table for 35 people or whatever? Because you want to take your friends. It's excellent food. Excellent food, whether it's for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. You're just going to absolutely enjoy it. And by the way, you might want to just go there with your wife or whatever, your girlfriend, your neighbor, and maybe buy some gift cards to pass out to your family and say, hey, you want to go to a great place to eat? Here. It's on us. Denny's Restaurant. Since 1953, Denny's has been outstanding. And this location is better than ever. 611 Overland and Burley, the best of breakfast, lunch, and dinner at Denny's Restaurant, the home of Zeb's Lunch Bunch. And our next Lunch Bunch will be next Thursday, the 28th. Everybody be there. All right, calls are welcome, 436 4587 I want to also mention... There are so many people that are stirring the pot right now and trying to make this situation even much, much worse. And the Black Panther groups around the United States, the evil. I mean, this is, we're talking about evil here. There is evil in the world. And there is evil in this United States. And there is a complete evil with the Black Panthers. They are yelling and chanting in uh, Ferguson, Missouri, and on their websites and everywhere else, kill the policeman. Kill the policeman Wilson, the name of the patrolman that was uh, involved in the shooting. Kill him, kill him, kill him. This is so despicable. And it, it just a bloodthirsty, vermin attitude uh, against this policeman. And another thing that the people don't realize, and I want to bring this out, the schools, the schools can't even start back there because of this mess. And unfortunately, many, many children are not getting their proper nutrition. Why? Because they depend on the schools for breakfast, lunch, and quite frankly, dinner. And it even is, it became so apparent to me that 
parents and their responsibility to their kids really lacking in this area? I mean, come on. You mean to tell me that they've got to start now a new website? It's called Feed Ferguson. And it's aimed at trying to line up meals and give out food to these kids that are dependent upon the schools at this time of the year to feed all these kids. And the parents, where are they? Where's the parental responsibility? Where are they? They're depending on the schools for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Schools can't open because of this mess in Ferguson. And the parents if you want to call them that, are throwing their hands up in the air and saying, oh, woe is me, nobody will feed my kids. I, I don't understand this. Give me a call, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. Well, I'm waiting for your call. I want to remind you, too, about Barry Equipment and Rental. They have three locations serving you, and that is, of course, Twin Falls, Jerome, and the new one right there on Highway 30 going into Burley. Mm, uh, they've got it all for you. They've been in business for over 30 years, and they've got all the Bobcat equipment. They've got all the Coyote tractors. They've got all the do sound loaders. They've got everything you need for all your tillers, mowers, lawn and garden stuff. They got it all. All your equipment to lease or buy right there at Berry Equipment and Rental. Don't forget too, they got full time certified mechanics and a great shop to work on all the equipment. Located in Twin Falls and in Jerome and at 159 West Highway 30 in Burley, Berry Equipment and Rental. Really, really nice folks. I'll tell you some other folks that are pretty doggone nice in that Snyder's surplus. Not just Army and hunting supplies. No, 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 no. I've got to get over there because uh, I've got to make some additions to my office with more desks and more office chairs and more furniture. And they've got those erase boards. they got everything over there. And they've got all your hardware. You name it, it is there at 112 South, 200 West of Rupert. Snyder Surplus. You get on in there today. Brand new, brand new store. Really nice and uh, brand new merchandise and friendly service serving you at Snyder's Surplus. Uh, calls are welcome, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. I've never seen such a drought of the phone lines closed. Do you know what's going on over there? She's gone. That might be a reason. Okay. Um... Uh, we'll check it out. Give me a call. 436-224-1866-927-4587. Good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Zeb. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Uh, people don't have a, the slightest idea what's going on in the world. We've got China and Russia supplying the uh, terrorists over there in the Middle East. Coming across the border behind the bunch that's invading our country, you've got the Soviet Union and China behind this population movement that's flooding our country. Mm -hmm. Now we've got the drug cartels moving in. Now we've got the terrorists that are building, getting stronger and stronger in this country. And people don't realize what they're doing. They're falling right into this big trap by causing all these problems into the big cities. You know, Tony, in addition to that, one other thing to worry about is that the ISIS, or now they prefer to call themselves the Islamic State, they are actually encouraging the rioters in Ferguson, Missouri, and they're on the website telling them that, uh, quote, we have been fighting the oppressive, racist United States government for you for decades, yet you still call us terrorists. And then they go on to say that they, ISIS is dedicated to raising awareness about the upcoming conquest of America and the benefits it has upon the American people. Tony, we're falling apart. This is evil personified. We've got to stop this crap. That's what it is. I don't very often use that word. I don't like that word. But we are in a filthy situation. Well, where are all the church goes that in this country that, that should be rising up and complaining because they're the ones that are going to be hit and executed if Sharia law takes place in this country and it's taken over by the Muslims, they're going to be lined up and shot and beheaded. 
you know, where is the church people? They should be heavily involved in what's going on because there isn't going to be any churches left in the You know, your point is well taken. And uh, I absolutely, I call on the churches, I call on the ministers, I call on the church leaders to be much more involved and really start teaching and preaching about evil out in the hinterland. Uh, this ISIS even said, listen to this quote, they said, justice and equality is under Sharia law. You'll never get it under democracy. My goodness, they're absolutely coming in and trying to subvert everything in America. And quite frankly, Tony, there are people that are dumb enough to buy into this. Well, the pastors of the churches are going to be the first ones to be beheaded if these people ever take over. They have to understand that. I, uh, I don't know. I am, I, I, there's so many stories this morning that scare me about ISIS and uh, what they're trying to do to solicit the black population back in the Midwest to rise up and join with them. And that's a direct quote from the story. Uh, I'm very concerned, Tony. Very concerned. Oh, I am too, and uh, this gun control thing is another thing. I agree. Uh, the best. God bless you and Mary. Thank you for your call this morning. Thank you. Can you imagine uh, with the social media the way it is today that uh, the Islamic State supporting and encouraging the rioters in Ferguson, feeding the fire, and <laughs> saying things like uh, calling on them to rise up and join with them. And then saying justice and equality is under the Sharia law. You'll never get it under democracy. Oh, my goodness. And then we have this liberal mindset, mindset that everything is okay. Everything's cool. Don't worry about it. And then we have also the appointment of more of these people, of Islamic bends back into our government. It just doesn't, it blows my mind. It blows my mind. Uh, calls are welcome, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. By the way, Jerry Zollinger called me a couple of days ago and he said, yes, the legacy continues of one of the greatest quarter horse ranch sales anywhere in the country. Zollinger Quarter Horse Ranch, 26th annual production sale, Saturday, September 13th at 10 a.m. with the preview and then the sale up at the ranch, 1994 South, 100 East of Oakley. And they're going to have a lot of great weanlings and started two and three year olds, 50 years of breeding and 26 years of production sales. They've got the best of the best and the best of big name horses like uh, Petra Boonsmall and uh, Shining Spark, Highbrow Cat. And they are always breeding for confirmation, disposition, and performance, okay? Don't forget the sale coming up on September 13th, Saturday, at 10 a.m. up at the ranch, 1994 South, 100 East of Oakley. Zollinger Quarter Horse Ranch, 26th Annual Production Sale. You be there, okay? Here now, the Capital Press Ag Minute. I'll be right back. The Capital Press Ag Minute is brought to you by OnlyAg.com. As wheat harvest continues across the Pacific Northwest and the Northern Plains, Burlington Northern Santa Fe Railway officials say they are catching up with a backlog of grain shipments across the region. Demand for moving oil from Canadian and North Dakota oil fields has reduced the availability of trains to the grain industry, particularly in North Dakota, South Dakota, and Minnesota. On August 15th, BNSF reported 2,671 past due cars to the federal government, with 1,262 in North Dakota. Dakota, 599 in Montana, and 201 in Minnesota. There were 119 in Washington, 6 in Oregon, and 5 in Idaho. The average number of days late for an outstanding grain order was 17 days. To receive instant, exclusive, unlimited access to the West Agricultural News Source, register your account today at CapitalPress.com. Uh, thank you very much, CapitalPress.com, with the Ag Minute this morning. Calls are welcome. Come on, give me a call, and let me know your thoughts about this evil that is going on in this country right now, with the possibility of what's happening in Ferguson, Missouri, uh, spreading to more cities as they call it a day of rage. You know, I don't realize whether or not you watch the news like I do and study the news, but 
There were many, many store owners that were interviewed about what they have lost back in Ferguson, Missouri. And there was a young man that it really hit home with me as to how devastating this is for their family. He's in business with his dad. They have a little grocery store. And he was telling me that since Sunday night, not telling me, he was telling the world that since Sunday night, they had lost over $50,000 initially, and the cost is going to go staggeringly high to maybe losing about a hundred to $150,000 possibly all all told. And why? Why should they lose anything? Why should they lose their business? Why? Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Good morning, Zeb. Yes, sir. I've been watching this, and i tell you what. If Idaho or if it comes up here like they're doing down there, and we got a governor with as gutless as what that thing is back there in Missouri, I hope to hell we stand up and do some butt-kicking. I don't think that Governor Butch Otto would put up with this for a minute. I'm certainly hoping that it would be a thumbs-down attitude and we're going to stop it now. We're going to nip it in the bud now. There will be not elongation of hours. It will be stopped immediately. Um, I just absolutely can't understand how Governor Nixon back in the state of Missouri could make this state... Here, let me throw this at you and I want you to think about this, Al. Give me an answer. He has had nine days to think about this situation and say some very stupid things about condemnation of the police. And I'll go back to the policeman. The policeman had split seconds to act and he has to live with that split second action. But yet we have politicians that wait for nine days and then they crawl out from underneath the woodwork. I know it. I mean, it's, it's a, a hell of a rotten governor that won't stand behind his police force when the guy, what I can see and read and, and, and listen to, that guy was right what he did because that big guy was going to thump on him. There are conflicting uh, stories, as you know, as to what happened, and uh, I'll go back to what I said yesterday, and I think you'll agree, that no matter what happens from this juncture on, if they find out with the grand jury evidence this morning that the policeman operated underneath duress, he was being attacked, uh, and they don't file charges against him, this whole area could go up in flames. Well, that's what I mean. you got double... Uh double jeopardy and worse than that you've got a law enforcement like holder what's he doing his nose in there he don't have a damn thing to do with amen it. he's calling for another autopsy well you do too many of them what do you got you got a cut up mess and you don't know what the hell went on well there have been two autopsies one by a very very world recognized doctor that is supposed to be the best in the industry and now they want number three, and really, what are they going to find that has not been found out before? Uh, they know about the entry wounds, they know exactly what uh, took place in the death of this young man, but what they don't know, and they still have to ascertain through the evidence at the grand jury, etc., is why this altercation took place and how it took place. And I'll guarantee you, this is a tinderbox back there that could spread to many other cities. And that poor little storekeeper, you've seen him getting picked up by the throat and slammed against a yeah. uh, shelf there or something away. Nobody's doing a thing to help him. I agree. Or their church, even them other people coming in raising holy hell from out of state. I agree. And you know, that's, that's so disgusting to me that these people that are coming in and being rebel rousers and agitators for nothing more than causing more violence and possibly more deaths. Well, bring, bring, be a governor, governor, and bring in the National Guard with orders to curtail uh, the uh, Tear and all that stuff, or else you're out of a job. I agree. Al, thank you for your call. Yeah, have a good one. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. I, uh, I just have to comment about what I'm seeing out of Missouri. Uh, the people that are causing all the trouble at night are not even from Missouri. I can bet you a, a dollar or two. And the other thing is, is that all those people have to do? There's a prime example that people are not looking for work. They're not trying to take care of themselves or their families. What was that kid doing in a C-store walking out with cigars 
if he's such a teenager, he was even underage. Chris. Maybe not. R right now, the area of Ferguson, Missouri, a suburb of St. Louis, is uh, realizing the effects of Obama and his administration of 13% unemployment. 13% unemployment. And it's not a progressive area at all. Because I'm going to just come right out and say it because of the laziness of the area and the slovenliness of the attitude. But I want to go back to something that involves you as a mother and a grandmother. One of the parts of the story that I mentioned just a moment ago is that schools can't start because of this mess. And many of the parents are upset because their kids are not being fed. The school feeds them breakfast, lunch, and supper. Where are the parents? Where is the responsibility, Chris? Help me on this. Well, you know what? I, I wasn't aware of that, but for sure, you know, the schools are not starting, so the kids are not getting their free lunches. And it's a problem right here in Magic Valley. Even in the summer, we, they, the parents are not taking care of them. That's kids. right. They're begging in the parks and stuff. What happened to us? My mom never, I, I mean, I never went without a meal. And actually, if my mom and dad didn't feel like they could afford the lunches, because it, I was from a big family, we had a nice home-packed lunch, and I made it for myself. The, the Americans are becoming such welfare, and, and it's, it's everybody. It's not just even the poor. Well, it, it, that's the whole point. You know, they, they can yell and scream and holler that, hey, you better uh, knock this off and we better get our kids back in school because we haven't got any food. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, parents. These are your children. Why are they thrust upon the taxpayers of any part of the United States, be it Ferguson, Missouri, or anywhere else, that they, the taxpayers, have to take care of your kids? And that's what it's coming down to. The schools can't open, and now the parents are upset because the kids can't eat. Where is the responsibility? Well, I, I mean, I feel bad that the schools are not opening because these kids are getting an education in street uh, justice, and that's too bad because it'll go with them the rest of their lives. And I do think I remember that the father of this kid was not so entirely sympathetic. But boy, they shut him down real fast. But the mom is still out there boo-hooing, acting like her dear little boy. You know what? I think she's the problem. You know, I, I, I guess maybe I'm being uh, gracious to the parents because in a time of mourning for the losing of their child, I can respect that. But when we look at the situation of this kid that was called Big Mike, who was a hulk of a young man, 18 years of age, well over like about 6'4", six, 6'5", six, 300 plus pounds, and a punk and a thug and a bully, uh, it's hard for me to keep and maintain the sympathy factor. Well, I think that you and I raised our children the same, and my husband especially. If our kid would have gotten in that kind of trouble, and he was the first one to hear about it, yeah. believe me, our son would have been running for the woods, because his justice at home was not fair. Amen. That's way. Amen. Chris, always good to hear from you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Appreciate it. Don't forget Sophie's Shatterbox, 530 East Street on the Square in Rupert. Oh, my, they serve breakfast, lunch, and supper Monday through Friday from 6 to 6. Saturdays and Sundays are open from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. And what a bakery. Oh, my. Wedding cakes and cookie bars and homemade bread and delicious cinnamon rolls. Everything is delicious at Sophie's Shatterbox, 530 East Street on the Square in Rupert. You stop in and see those good folks today. Calls are welcome and appreciated. 436-2244-1866-927-4587. We've got another story, and I'm almost hesitant to even mention this story. It is so sick, so perverted, and scary. Scary. 
I want to get into that in just a moment. Don't forget the Twin Falls County Fair and Rodeo with the Magic Valley Stampede. My goodness, this is going to be ripping good fun for everybody. And the theme of the Twin Falls County Fair this year, Carnival Lights and Western Nights. This is an ag-based, family-oriented fair, and you're going to love it. Don't forget the Magic Valley Stampede PRCA Rodeo is going to be the 28th, 29th, and 30th. Exceptionally top good cowboys from PRCA and all the WPRA women's barrel racers coming in. Excellent quality buck and stock, award-winning specialty acts, all of this and more at the Twin Falls County Fair and the Magic Valley Stampede Rodeo. Don't miss it. It runs on 28, 29, and 30 at the Schaus Arena in Filer. Um, Gina, I thought I heard the cow while I was doing the ad. If I didn't, yell at me. I couldn't remember if I heard it or not. Nope, no oh, All right, thank you. No moo. Thank you. Uh, calls are welcome, 436-224-1866-927-4587. Give me a call. Uh, the other story that I want to get into this morning is one that uh, you don't want to think about is one that you hope and pray is not true, and is one that, if it is true, it's even more evil in the world today. Yesterday, it was learned through a video that an American journalist working and covering all the action that's going on in the Mideast had been kidnapped quite some time ago and during his kidnapping by the ISIS, he was finally yesterday brought to the forefront on the top of a little sand dune and beheaded on videotape. The videotape was sent here. They diagnosed the videotape. And uh, unfortunately, it looks like it is this American journalist. And we are living in a world of complete chaos. And I'll go back and say, we are living in a world of complete evil. The ISIS, Islamic State, is demanding that if we, the United States, don't stop our bombing of the area and the region, then they will behead two other journalists that they have in captivity. So they're basically telling us these are the poker chips. We hold the best of cards. You had better do what we say. Ladies and gentlemen, whether it is local or whether it's international, evil like this has to be recognized and evil like this has to be destroyed. I know there are many out there in the audience that are of left-wing liberal persuasion, and they're probably saying, well, let's try to get along. Let's show them that we can be nice people. Let's show them this. Let's do this. It's a no. Evil has to be destroyed. Evil has to be dealt with. Evil is a cancer. Evil is a growing cancerous tumor that has to be obliterated. And that's where we are today. We're seeing evil crop up all over the globe against us. And it's here in the United States. I, I just cannot believe some of the stories that we're hearing about uh, the ISIS even being here in the United States and ready to stage a jihad on our soil. And the threats from these people and what their demands are. How much longer are we going to abide by what they say? How much longer are we going to have an administration that doesn't do anything or show any force or say that they're going to have meetings and come out with answers to these problems and then nothing's ever done. How much longer before evil is recognized and destroyed? Call me. 436-224-1866-927-4587. Please give me a call. While I'm waiting for your call that I know is coming in, and my voice is a little weak this morning, so I need your help, 
Uh, we're going to have a weather update with Michael Rogers Weather, and we'll do that right now. Hey, hello, everyone. Michael Rogers is up at the ranch. Clouds and rain is still with us all the way through Friday night. Scattered showers today, 18 for the high, 60 for the overnight. Low look to come out of all of this by Saturday. Sunny. And all the way through Monday. Sunny. Right now, today is yucky. Scattered showers. Enjoy the weather. It's the only weather you got. Thank you, Michael. MichaelRogersWeather.com. And, of course, the weather forecast for the next couple of days right here on Zebeth Ranch. Okay, come on. Get on the phone. Give me a call. 436-224-4186-927-4587. Evil is here. And the group called the ISIS, making demands to our government. And uh, they have just, uh, as I said yesterday and last evening, supplied a video. And, uh, of course, it was with journalist James Foley, a freelance uh, newsman from the Boston area. And now they have said that if Obama does not stop the bombing in that part of the world, they will go ahead and possibly behead two other kidnapped victims that they have. Uh, I believe they both worked for the news media. One worked for Time Magazine. His name is Stephen Joel Soltoff. He is also one of the abductees that they have threatened his life. Where do you draw the line? Do you work with? Do you appease these people? Or do you say enough is enough and evil has to be recognized and destroyed? Your opinion is important. Please give me a call. 436-224-1866-927-4587. While I'm waiting for your call that I know is coming in, hopefully, I'll also tell everybody about our Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations. Yes, sir, the best in tires, the best in tread designs for all your type of driving. You know, like if you drive across the country 37 times a month, they've got the tires for you. You just go to Aunt Martha and Uncle Fred's, hey, they can help you with those kind of tires for your driving needs. On your car, your pickup, your SUV, horse trailer, boat trailer, whatever you need tires on, they've got the tires for you with the free peace of mind tire protection and free lifetime tire and mileage care. Always at your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. And the best in brake service, you know that. The best in front end alignments, you know that. The best in shocks and struts, and of course batteries, and they've got easy credit plans available. So stop in and see Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family in Paul, John on Pauline in Twin Falls, and Randy on Oberlin in Burley, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. All right, give us a call, 436-224-4186-927-4587. Appreciate your calls. Gina, are you right there by the microphone for a second? Yeah, I'm here. Um, when do you say enough is enough and not give in to these people anymore? We're living in a complete chaotic world, and I guess this morning I'm really sounding negative because evil has got to be stopped, and we're not doing a thing to fight it. Well, when we have a two so-called people who are upstanding within the religious community calling out for rage, <clears throat> that's what we've got going on. Yeah. You know, and it's and it's less than impressive. What are your beepers going off for? I don't know. I'm trying to figure that out. Mm, my goodness. Yeah, it was kind of annoying, wasn't it? Uh, well, not annoying, but it sounded like uh, all of a sudden we were under attack or siege or something. <laughs> I, I, I was getting worried. No, no. Um, so, somebody did had call, had called in, and I think that was the beeping noise because maybe they hung up. So if they want to call in again, yeah, call them back in. But you know what you just said about religious leaders. Uh, there was a gentleman earlier, Tony, that called. Yes. And I honestly, and I'm going to be criticized for this, but I'm going to say, I don't think that our churches in general are doing enough to draw attention to the evil that's out there in the world, in our communities, in our cities, in our schools, and doing enough to acknowledge it and try to fight it. There are, there's so much evil out there that uh, really just open your eyes, but what I find appalling is that you've got a Reverend Je Jesse Jackson and then, and then Al Sharpton calling out 
for the communities to rage. They are the ones that are supposed to be bringing calm, bringing peace, being, bringing healing. But they're doing the exact opposite. That really is the truth, too, because uh, not only them. But there was a black minister that was interviewed yesterday, and I caught just the tail end of the interview, and the uh, interviewee said, why aren't you, as uh, the leader of your church, calling for a complete reduction in this mess, in this chaos? Yeah. And this man looked at the camera and said, well, that's not for me to do because people are expressing their opinions. What kind of garbage answer was that? You know, people are allowed to express their opinions, but when you are a leader of a congregation, when you take on that responsibility to spread the peace and love of the Lord, then you should do that. You should not be promoting hate, discontent, riot, and mass. Absolutely. Absolutely. Carl, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Brad. Yes, sir. You know, they have two people that they threaten to be head or whatever. If they don't stop the bombing... But there is that dam there that if they were to blow it up and cause that flooding and everything, thousands and thousands of people would probably be killed. Uh, business destroyed everything just because they're starting to do that. Well, so wait a minute, I want to understand where you're coming from. Keith, wait a minute. I want to understand which area you're coming from. So you're saying that we should stop the bombing to save the possibility that the terrorists will blow up the dam? Is that what you're saying? Absolutely not. Okay. I'm saying they're holding them people as hostages. And you know, you know they're worthless. They're going renegades anyway, so they might... Uh, you know, we quit the bombing and everything, and they still might be, go ahead and behead them anyway. Yeah. Just to uh, make an example. The, and I'm glad I had a... I'm glad we had a definition of where you're coming from on this, because I think through appeasement, which Obama has done already in some instances, it hasn't done anything except show that we're weaker and we're not going to stand behind our red line, so to speak, in the sand. Uh, but this is a mess over here, and I'm certainly not advocating that we should just turn our back on these kidnapped individuals. But you know something? We can't keep appeasing evil either. You know, and then there's another thing. Uh, these people are probably American reporters or something. Yes. Who, of their own choosing, went there to further their education or whatever you want to call it. So you might say, you know, it's like, you know, when that stove is real hot, you say, don't touch it. But you got to touch it anyway, just to make sure. Yeah, but wait a minute, Keith. Let me take another side on this real quick with you. Um, thank goodness we have people like these reporters that will put themselves in harm's way to report on the evil in the world, so that we can be cognizant of what's going on. Think about a world to where we don't have reporters, that we don't have the news media, we don't have people that are willing to risk their life and limb to tell us about evil that's spreading. Yes, but the point I'm trying to get across is when these people go there to do this reporting, they know there's a 50-50 chance that they may be killed. That's true. That's and true. So that, that's what I'm getting at. I mean, uh, like the old saying, well, you brought it on yourself or something like that. So I do feel sorry for them. I hope they can resolve it. But, but you know, we can't risk... Quit bombing these people because there will be another, there will not be another bomb dropped and they'll just take over the whole thing. I agree and I, I absolutely stand behind that evil has to be recognized and destroyed. And I don't mean just a slap on the wrist, I mean destroyed. And I think you and I are on the same page. Thank you so much for your call. You bet. God bless, sir. Thanks. Yeah, uh, where do you draw the line? Uh, I feel terrible for Mr. Foley and these other individuals that were working in the area and they were doing the job as news journalists to report what's going on in the Middle East, on the Syrian border, Iraqi border, etc. But 
And you have to commend them and hold them in the highest esteem and regard for making sure that you and me and everybody else in the world knows about the evil and chaos that is in that region of the world. But you cannot meet the demands of terrorists that threaten to keep kidnapping more people, making more threats, making more demands. And I say it again. I've said it 30 times. Evil has to be recognized and totally destroyed. Got time for one more call. Give me a call. 436-2244-1866-927-4444. Uh, we're going to be talking to Doug Johnson in a few minutes back in Colorado about this. And uh, some of the other people that we've got coming on the program this morning. Uh, at 9.30, I've got a gentleman by the name of Houston Shaw with the Shaw Shooting School. Know what to do and know how to use your weapons. And we're going to be talking to him. And then at 10 Six, we've got Kyle Olson with EAGnews.org talking about the status of education in this country. And then at 10.30 this morning, my old buddy Dan Kish with the Institute for Energy Research talking about uh, some of the rich people in this country that are trying to swing public opinion towards green energy and everybody live in a cave and burn buffalo dung. So that's what's coming up for the remainder of this morning. Uh, let's see. Gina, have you got anything you want? to put on this morning? I've got an open forum for one whole minute. For one whole minute? One whole minute. Go ahead. I, I am brain dead today. I haven't even had my coffee. Really? Did you oversleep? I did. What time did you get to the station? 7.30. Now, for you, that's highly unusual. Well, at 7.30 is when I actually, that's when I get here. I didn't wake up until 10 minutes after 7. Oh, poor Kennedy. Uh, actually, Ken Kennedy is with his dad, so it's okay. Oh, but that's why you slept in. That is exactly why I slept in. <laughs> then I looked, at my, I looked at the clock, and I'm like, oh, God, I got to go. And so I... Ladies and gentlemen, let me correct that last phrase. It was not those words that she uttered, because I know her all too well. <laughs> That was the FCC appropriate version of what I said this morning. <laughs> All right. Hey, listen, I'll be back in six. Don't go away. We got a lot more. Thanks a lot. Okay. Well, here we go. Hour number two on a Wednesday, the 20th of August already. I'm Zeb Bell with Zeb at the Ranch with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you, and service is the key word. Along with some of our great advertisers, Lee's Furniture Floors and More at 459 Overland and Burley, mm, wonderful people, and Western Waste Services. From the canyons of the Snake River. Western Way Services, you better believe it. And uh, yesterday, after the program, I had a call and the people said, Hey, would you mind giving us that number again, 734-6969, for Western Way Services? Because we're going to be having a family reunion and we need some porta potties And I said, Well, all you have to do is call. They're always at your disposal. Western Way Services, you better believe it, with the porta potties and, of course, all the dumpsters in various sizes, they serve you. Give them a call 734-6969 Western Waste Services. Really nice people. Oh, and when I talk about nice people on this program, I've been blessed with the very best of advertisers and sponsors. I want to mention again about our friend jo Joel Heward. Yep, Joel, if you're listening this morning, thank you for all you do for the community. Thank you all you do for this program. Handsome Mortuary, 710 6th Street in Rupert with Joel. Hewitt and his staff. Number to call 436-5636. And I stress, 
that when there is the passing of a loved one, you want to work with people that are going to help you with the highest ethical standards and unquestioned integrity. And that's exactly what you're going to find with Joe Heward at Hanson Mortuary. 710 6th Street and Rupert, number to call. 436-5636. That number again, 436-5636. Uh, also want to remind you too, um, let's see, I think I'll go and uh, get on the phone line with my dear, dear friend Doug Johnson and then we might have a little spot break during the middle of our conversation, but I don't want to hold him off any longer. Good morning, Doug Johnson. How are you? Well, I was just telling Gina, I'm really, really tired of the mess this world's in, Zeb. How about you? Yeah, were you listening to the first hour? No, I can't get your show anymore online. Uh, I, I, I guess it's because I don't use Internet Explorer anymore, and so I'm not able to get it anymore. But uh, So I, I don't know what's been up, but I, I had a suspicion uh, what you might be talking about, So, but I'll, I'll let you lead off. Well, uh, basically what I said is that I think the world is just absolutely being controlled by evil. And I said that uh, evil has to be recognized and destroyed. I'm giving you a real short synopsis. And I'm, I'm fed up with the ignorance about evil and the lack of respect for evil and people just going, ho-hum, oh, it's another day at the office. I think we've got to stand up and address this, whether it's at the pulpits, at every church across America, or whether it's every teacher and professor. I don't care who it is. We have to address evil and get rid of it. All I can say is amen. I, I couldn't agree with you more, Zeb. I, I, I think that this, you have hit on the underlying issue on everything. It's about evil versus good. And we have to recognize evil for what it is, whether it be the Democrat Party, which is evil, and, and I, I don't care what anybody tells me, I will argue with anybody, you cannot embrace the Democrat platform and call yourself good because their platform is evil. That's, that's on the political level. <clears throat> on a spiritual level, we have to address the evil in our lives, both, both individually before God and as a nation, because we allow things that are not proper, and God will not bless us if we don't straighten that out. And on an international scale, we must stop out evil wherever it exists. We see, and of course I'm sure one of the things you've probably been talking about is this mess in the Middle East with ISIS. You know, I, I said to Gina, I said, isn't it interesting that all of a sudden when the news shifts to the middle of America, to Ferguson, Missouri, two things happen. Because the headlines are no longer focused on the Middle East, ISIS goes out and beheads the journalist in a terrible, terrible act, because uh, that puts them at the front of the news, and Hamas violates the ceasefire once again with Israel, shoots a few rockets into Israel again because that puts them back in the forefront of the news. This is how it works. They all want that attention. The only way we should be dealing with these things is to stomp it out and destroy evil. We should wipe it off the face of the earth. It's that simple. And um, maybe people don't like that. Maybe that's too harsh for people. But it's time we start to deal har harshly with bad things. Well, I could not agree more. And our verbiage is intertwined this morning as far as our thoughts are concerned. But here's something that really bothered me, and I had it in the first hour, Doug. You were talking about ISIS and the uh, absolute atrocities of beheading that journalist. Well, wait a minute. They've also done something else on their social media page. They are encouraging the rioters in Ferguson, Missouri, and they're saying things like this. Justice and equality is under the Sharia law. You'll never get it under democracy. And they're calling on the black population to rise up and join with them. Yeah, and, and I'm aware of that, and what's disturbing is that, you know, we have this infiltration. We've seen it, actually, Islam, which is, is, is has shown itself to be evil. I'm just going to call it what it is, and people can tell me all day long that, no, it's a religion of peace. Really, then why aren't the, those who are supposedly peaceful standing up against those who aren't? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Zeb, I, I, I have no time for it anymore. The fact is, we can see where it is, and we've seen this infiltration, especially into the black community for years, in the prisons and stuff. We've seen this infiltration to, to win 
prisoners over to the Islamic faith and, and people like uh, um, uh, my, 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 the guy who's head of the Nation of Islam, I can't remember his name. Oh, Louis Farrakhan. Uh, uh, out there, you know, pursuing him. J- Jeremiah Wright was a Muslim who supposedly converted to Christianity, but what he converted to was liberation theology Christianity, which is not Christianity. It is communism, and it was designed by the communists to infiltrate the black churches and destroy the morality in the, bl- in the black community in America. So we have all these things happening, and we have a White House that embraces the Muslim Brotherhood and Hamas and all these terrorist organizations. In fact, there is talk I heard yesterday, I'm trying to find out more information about it, that um, the U.S. government is involved in supporting the caliphate, which unfortunately would not surprise me. We are in really bad shape, and uh, it, it's, it's time for Americans to say, not, not just sit and do like you and I are doing and talk about, we need to put a stop to this, and it needs to start, or we, the stop needs to happen immediately. I think it starts to happen in less than 100 days when we go to the ballot box and we make changes in, in what's going on in our Congress. I couldn't agree more. You know, and, and I said this first hour, that I think that uh, people look at evil, they look at this uh, problem over in the Middle East, they look at ISIS, and they look at this beheading, this atrocity against mankind with this journalist, and they think, well, oh, that's over there. But no, no, Doug, there is evil to be handled and regulated right here in our country on a local, state, and national level. Evil must be recognized and destroyed, and I'm going to stand behind that. Zeb, I'll stand with you. I, I think you're right, and I think, you know, we always think it's not in our own backyard, and it is. And and I, I'll give credit. I'm, I'm sure you know uh, Colonel Allen West. Mm-hmm. I just think the world of, um, he wrote a blog post uh, at his website in the past week, I believe it was, and he comes out point blank when he's examining all the things going on, and he says point blank that Barack Obama is an Islamist. Now that takes guts. One of the reasons I love that man is he's willing to speak the truth and willing to speak what he thinks. I'm sure that's why he's probably hated by the left, but we need to recognize what's going on. And one of the problems with Americans, and uh, my friend Trevor Loudon from New Zealand, who I know you've interviewed, he and I were talking uh, just this past week, and uh, he said, you know, one of the problems in America is that Americans are too nice. They're nicer than the rest of the world. And part of that niceness is that we don't want to accept that it's really happening in our country. We don't want to believe that we really could have elected this kind of a person. We don't want to believe this person has put in power somebody like Eric Holder, which, as a sidelight, I need to say this, Zeb, because this is important, and it hit me this week. If people don't know about Eric Holder, he came up through the Clinton administration. He was part of the DOJ in the Clinton administration. And now, of course, he's our attorney general. If Hillary Clinton is elected in 2016, there's a very good chance she may keep him and keep this mess of a DOJ we have. This is how how insidious and and, and tied tightly uh, interwoven uh, the left is. And, well, frankly, the only thing to do with the Democrat Party is to defeat it because it's not the Democrat Party of our parents and grandparents. My mother was a Kennedy Democrat, although that, that, he's the only Democrat I ever remember her voting for. But the point is that that's not what the Democrat Party is anymore, and people need to realize it and wake up, and we need to destroy them and get them out of power. Doug, I'm going to ask your indulgence for 60 seconds. Let me take care of some bills. I'll be right with you. Doug Johnson knows the radio business, and he knows that we absolutely really appreciate our sponsors like Duck Uglies at 163 West Highway 30 in Burley next to Barry Equipment and Rental. What a great big place to go in and enjoy the meals. Oh, the fantastic menu is great. And on Friday, August 29th, they're going to have the Nitty Gritty Dirk Band there. And on Saturday, August 30th, Barton and Bowler. What great ways to relax. Go in and have a super meal at Duck Uglies and enjoy the music. Music starts about 7.30 or 8 o'clock in the evening. Stop in the Duck Uglies, 163 West Highway 30 in Burley. And also, I want to say again, we really appreciate Cheney Flooring and Home Design at 1228 Oakley Avenue in Burley. And believe me, you better sign up for their free do-it-yourself classes beginning in September and also schedule a free in-home design consultation. They 
can help your world become more beautiful and more relaxing. Check with them today. Look for their blue door. They're located at 1228 Oakley Avenue in Burley. Call them at 678-6945. Cheney Flooring and Home Design. And right now, back to my dear friend Doug Johnson in Colorado. Doug, one of the things that's been discussed... And we talked about it in the first hour with quite a few of my callers. Is that now more than ever before, I don't care if it's a Baptist minister, Presbyterian, Lutheran, Catholic priest, doesn't make any difference what denomination. They have got to be more aggressive with their congregate members because now a lot of the sleaze in Ferguson, Missouri is calling for a day of rage in other cities. This thing is going to grow like a cancer if if it's not nipped in the bud now. Well, I think you're right, Zeb. In fact, um, when this thing all erupted in, in Missouri, the first thing that went through my mind was I, it reminded me of the 1968 riots in Chicago during the Democratic National Convention. Right. And I started thinking about this, and I, and I realized that, you know, this is Trayvon Martin all over again. And here there's, there's some very interesting correlations you may have already seen and, and already mentioned to your audience. I'll throw them out there. You can cut me off if I'm repeating what you've already discussed. But um, <clears throat> Trayvon Martin's whole situation occurred before the 2012 election. Now this is happening just before the 2014 midterms. Very coincidental that they're both happening in election years and they're being ginned up by the government. Eric Holder is on his way to Missouri, bringing a whole bunch of people from the DOJ and, and FBI agents to. They're sending in the team who went down into Florida to get people in the community all ginned up about what happened with Trayvon Martin. They're doing that. And they're, in Ferguson now, the exact same people are being sent to, quote, unquote, train the protesters in how to protest appropriately. I don't know why our government's training protesters. And <clears throat> this is all going on in the name of doing the right thing. But we're not going to see justice. George Zimmerman in the Trayvon Martin case, yes, he got justice in court based on the evidence produced. You know, he was, uh, he got justice, but society never gave him justice. He will never have peace. He will never have a life that's normal again because our society would not allow the legal system to work properly and honor it. What you hear in, in Ferguson, Missouri, is the exact same thing. Nobody cares about the facts. And when I say nobody, I mean the protesters. They don't care about the facts. They don't want, it, it doesn't matter. Even Michael Brown's family called in, I uh, <clears throat> can't remember his first name, Baden, who is a forensic expert. Michael, and Michael Baden. autopsy, you remember? Yeah, Michael Baden. His autopsy, he said he was shot six times from the front, and he stood behind uh, Michael Brown's family attorney before the cameras afterwards, and, and his attorney was screaming and yelling that he was shot in the back and killed by being shot in the back when their own forensic expert just said the opposite. Those people don't want to hear the truth. They just want to have violence, and they want to have turmoil in our country. Doug, there's so much that is encompassed in Ferguson, Missouri, that people, uh, I'm afraid right here in southern Idaho, are going to be very naive about and uh, calling for a day of rage. And the Black, Black Panthers, Panthers groups are calling for, quote unquote, killing of Policeman Wilson, demanding that he be killed. It's a bloodthirsty vermin trap right now that many people are falling into and trying to support, including the governor of Missouri. Missouri Nixon, and when he said something really frivolously stupid, a vigorous prosecution is needed immediately in this case. He's already tried and been the jury and judge and executioner for this poor policeman. Governor Nixon in Missouri, I believe, because he kind of changed his tune suddenly, and I believe the administration in Washington got to him and said, you better toe the party line and join us in this, and that, I believe that's what really happened behind the scenes. The poor police officer who, who's in the middle of this, and, and we really don't know all the facts. It's, it's looking like he did what he had to do, but the, the grand jury has not ruled, and we really don't know all the facts yet, so I'm going to remain neutral on, on, on what happened. But this poor man, if he's innocent, his, his life is over. Right. I mean, he may still physically live, but he has no future if, if he stays in Missouri, maybe even if he stays in the United States. His life is ruined, and it's very sad. He was just trying to do his job. But you have 
once again, as we've been saying, you have the government has already drawn a conclusion and now, now is trying to influence the public. And what scares me, Zeb, and I, and I guess I should uh, go back to what I was saying because I, I didn't even let myself finish, about the elections coming up. I believe we may see more of these incidents around the country where these things happen. You won't see it like in Chicago where, unfortunately, blacks kill whites on a regular basis. You only hear it when a white kills a black because that's how this government works, this racist Department of Justice. But on top of that, they will use this message in the midterms. The Democrats will use it to say, we need to get the Republicans out of office because they are haters, they are hateful, they are causing these problems in our country, and we need to bring peace to our country, and only Democrats can bring it to you. And they may even go so far, I had a talk show host say to me the other day on another show, he had the idea, and this is a very interesting idea, I'm not sure if I agree with it, he said he thinks we're going to see this happen a number of other times before November, and then Obama's going to step in and say, too much turmoil, we have to postpone the elections, yep. and that gives him more control of what's going on and maintains control in Congress. And uh, it's a very scary thing to think that could happen, but we're on the verge of it. Well, uh, I've got to say this. My audience is extremely well-educated and thinks things out. And yesterday, that was said on my program by more than one caller, that Obama has the uh, option and the cards in his hand right now. But if this problem does prevail itself as getting larger and more uh, dangerous, he could even declare martial law and call off the elections and uh, remain in power. There's a lot of things that can happen, but I want to go back just for a minute. And I want to talk to you about the governor and uh, why I'm so offended by this man, Nixon. He did not say anything. He did not do anything for nine days. And then he comes out with his condemnation of the police and also this particular policeman, Wilson, that was involved in the shooting. He had nine days, Doug. This policeman, Wilson, the officer only had split seconds to act, whether he did right or whether he did wrong. He only had split seconds to act and he has to live with that for the rest of his life and everybody else is grandstanding and formulating an opinion well after the fact. Oh, you're absolutely right and, and it's my heart breaks for this community because sadly, and, and most people don't hear it, I heard an interview with a local pastor, a local church there in Ferguson, and he was saying this is not a segregated segregated community. The pastor happened to be white. 35% of his church is black, uh, and he has Native Americans and white Americans and all different uh, ethnic and racial makeups in his church. And uh, what's interesting is, you know, one of the things he pointed out, and we've alluded to this, is this is not really coming from the community. This is communist groups and revolutionaries that are going in from the outside of Ferguson from many other states to agitate and distort the message. And then you get the Al Sharptons and right. the Jesse Jackins, Jackson's adding to this. And, you know, we have a nightmare on our hands. If, if this was handled pro properly, it would be handled by the local authorities with the local community and, the, and everybody else would stay out of it. But unfortunately, what's happening is this is being affected from the outside. So what we are seeing really isn't the local community doing this on its own. It's being affected by outside pressures, and I believe it's pressures that fall into the whole plan of this administration of creating uh, <clears throat> not just distractions, but also creating division in our country. Because when things get bad enough between this, between the border crisis and, and, and our economy and you know the, the international crises, uh, they will step up at some point and say, this isn't working. We need to replace our system. We need to rewrite our Constitution. It is time for change because America does not work anymore. It's antiquated, and they will offer their solution, which I guarantee will be communism. You know, quick, Doug, I've only got two minutes left, and I want your answer on this. I was really appalled because of what's happening in Ferguson, Missouri. They are not uh, starting the classes at schools because of this mess. And then, here's the part of the story I want you to respond to. Many children are not getting their meals because the schools are closed. They're not getting breakfast. They're not getting lunch. They're not getting supper. And the parents are crying the blues because the schools can't open. And I go back and I say, good heavens. What happened to parental responsibility? Well, I would agree with you that, you know, and I, I shouldn't paint a picture of something I don't know much about as far as that local community, but too many people in our society, and I would bet this is true there too, 
are more worried about having their cable TV and their cell phone and all this. Well, they probably get the cell phone from Obama, so that doesn't count. But having all these things for themselves instead of having their priorities right and saying, our priorities in our community and our families need to be doing the right thing first. And that means we quit spending on, on luxury items and we start dealing with the basics both in families and in the community. And I, I'm saying the community too, Zeb, for one quick reason. I know we're out of time, but that, that quick reason is that communities are in trouble too because they don't have uh, the right kind of people teaching their kids or in law enforcement because they won't invest the money because they're spending it in stupid things in the community instead of things that are needed. Absolutely. Doug, I wish I had more time. Uh, it's been a really good conversation this morning, and we need to do this again uh, real soon. And I wish you God's blessings. Thank you so much. How is everything going with the Horse Sense blog and the new book? Give it a plug real quick. Uh, things are going well. We've got a lot of activity, um, and uh, the book's doing well, The Leadership Secret. They can see, see it at thehorsesensblog.com. And I would encourage people, even more than reading my blog this week, although I have an interesting one, is look up Alan West's website and read the piece he wrote about our president and about our situation in our country, because it's excellent. All right. Doug Johnson, God's blessings to you. Talk to you next week. Thanks for being on the show this morning. Thank you, Zeb. Thank you, buddy. Hey, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I uh, always look forward to having Doug on the show, and he'll be back next Wednesday at 9.06. Did you hear that? Did you hear what I just said? You missed that? Well, then you'd better call 312-0957, Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids, Christine Pickup, Doctor of Audiology, so you can hear all of this. She's located at 1218 9th Street, Unit 2 behind the Minidoka Hospital, right across the street from the emergency room, 312-0957. And don't forget, if you're having hearing problems, you better have your hearing checked now. Did you you hear that? Call her at 312-0957, Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. Also, real quick, I want to remind everybody about my dear friends at Let's Ride. Oh, my goodness, are they having fun over there. Mm -mm. That's where the fun is sold, you know. They're located at 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and Burley, and they're open during their summer hours, Monday through Saturday, 9 to 6. And they've got the new, brand spanking new, 2015 models coming in now. All the dirt bikes, can am side-by-sides, and they've got rebates on some of the four Team models, oh my goodness sakes, and all the accessories too. I mean, all the accessories, they got a great big area in there for the accessories, and then out behind, they've got a great big service department headed up by Brad and the rest of the crew. They know how to fix everything at Let's Ride Highway 24 between Rupert and Burley. That's where the fun is sold. Really good people. We're going to get on the phone line right now, and we're going to check with Gina and see if we have our guest waiting for us. Is Mr. Houston Shaw on the phone? Hold on a second. I need to plug in my headphones because I didn't hear what she said. But no, <laughs> we do not have him. I, I just called him up a message. Oh, he uh, gave us the shining uh, no answer, huh? Yes, so I left a wonderful message. Gave him this whole free number and said, I will be calling you back. Ooh, I wish I would have known that because then I would have called Doug and I would have made arrangements to have him stay on the program a little bit longer. But due to the fact that, Mr. Shaw, if you'll keep trying him, I would appreciate... Pardon me? I shall. I'll keep okay. trying. Uh, we want calls coming in. We'll kind of make this an open half hour. And here's the question. Do you agree with me that evil... Bad evil is more prevalent today than at any other time in America or, for that matter, the entirety of the world. Evil, as we know and understand it, is very pronounced, now more so than I think ever before. What do you consider to be evil? Give me a call at 436-2244-1866-927-4587. I'd certainly like to hear from you. And while I'm waiting, 
for your call. I will also at this time tell you a little bit about our friends, Cameron and Siemens Insurance. Dean Cameron and Todd Siemens. Really, really good guys. And uh, they're accessible and devoted to serving you and everything you need regarding life insurance, health insurance, retirement planning, employee benefits. They are there for you. Very thoughtful, very caring with their recommendations. So give them a call today for an appointment at 436-4424, Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. Houston is on the line for you. <clears throat> Boy, I wish I had a better throat this morning. I'm going to have to upgrade my water and put something in it. Uh, good morning to Mr. Houston Shaw over in beautiful Hagerman area. How are you, sir? <laughs> I'm doing all right, what's going on? Well, I was very much impressed, Houston, when I saw in the newspaper a story about you and uh, teaching people how to shoot their weapons and really understand more about their weapons. And I guess my question is, as I read the story and found out about your dad and what a great shooter he was and you and what you're trying to do to teach people, would you say that most Americans that own a gun really do not understand the proper mechanics and the proper way to fire the gun? Uh, I would absolutely say that. And it's, it's, it's a hard deal to explain to someone that because um, the media doesn't cover shooting so well. And so when people go out and shoot, you know, they think they're maybe decent in shooting, but, you know, they're, uh, they're far inferior to a guy that really knows, knows what he's doing. Now, when you take somebody at the school, and by the way, I absolutely think that I'm a candidate for your school along with my wife. We've had guns ever since we've been married, and I mean this in all seriousness. Uh, I think a lot of times, guys especially, they, they want to have this macho image, and they want to say, well, I know all about guns. It's the missus that ought to learn something. But I'll tell you something. I think I could learn a lot from you, and I'll bet you see this a lot where the guys don't know as much as they think they do. <laughs> no, sure. I mean, I can see a guy, he picks up a gun right away. Just the way he holds the gun, the way he handles the gun, the way he uh, presents the gun, the way he loads the gun. I mean, right off the bat, you just see all these different red flags going off. Um, and they're, you know, depending on the guy, they can be receptive to being taught. But typically, I get a lot of guys out that are taking their their wives or their girlfriends to me and then they end up hearing what I'm saying to them and they have no idea what I'm saying because they've never been formally taught and then they end up taking the class as well. Um, I, I, I agree with you 100%. Houston, what's the number one thing, if there is a one, two, three, four answer on this, that you want to teach these people? Is it gun safety? Is it knowing more how to hit the target that they're aiming at? I mean, what's the number one thing you want to teach people? Yeah, uh, for the most part, it's just the proper technique of gun handling. I mean, I would say in Idaho, almost 100% of families have, maybe 95% of families have firearms within their home, and I'm just teaching them a, a nice, proper, safe way to handle their weapon. First and foremost, I don't get into, you know, too much self-defense. I just teach you how to properly shoot the weapon. Okay. What about the actual targeting and shooting at targets and learning uh, how to be more adept at uh, basically hitting what you're aiming at? <laughs> yeah, so there's, a, there's a, a technique to that as far as pistol shooting goes where most people, they, they hammer the trigger really hard with their strong hand when they're shooting and typically your shots go low and so you have to uh, press the trigger in a manner that doesn't misalign the sights. Um, and that's that's a big, big issue that uh, is, is very overlooked in most people's lives when they're shooting. I mean, I've got police officers that have been training for, you know, 10, 15 years that are, you know, poor shots, and then they just miss the, the key about, you know, proper trigger manipulation. I mean, not just police officers, but everyone for that matter. Um, I mean, I would say 95% of people have no concept of, of uh, pressing the trigger correctly to ensure a correct shot. And then they have these guns that they're maybe going to use for self-defense. Um, you know, in there, they're, they're extremely inaccurate at a close range. 
Okay, now, Houston, let me ask you this question then. Uh, uh, do you tell people, basically, after you acknowledge their abilities or their inabilities, basically the kinds of guns that they would be most uh, adept at using? Do you try to give them information that way? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So you have you have a, a, just a far array of different firearms for each individual user. I mean, if you're looking at an elderly, elderly woman, she's not going to have some full-size, you know, high-caliber gun. She's going to probably want something that, for one, that she can shoot that's light, that doesn't kick a lot, and that also she can manipulate. So I get a ton of people that come to my classes that simply can't even shoot their own firearm, but they have them in their drawers. They just have never shot them before. And so a lot of your uh, your women, they can't manipulate the slides. You have to rack the slides to get a bullet into the chamber of a pistol, typically. And so a user like that would like to go for more of a, a revolver, so you simply pull the trigger, um, and then that rotates the cylinder. And typically, you can do that with some of these, these women, but a lot of the times, these women can't even pull the trigger on a revolver. And then so you got to go a different route. You maybe go a route with a... Like one that's got a really easy slide and action pull on it. Um, and then the opposite effect, someone that can has a little bit of stronger strength in their upper body and their arms and their hands. Uh, they might want to go with something a little more compact, a little more full size in a K9 mil 40, 45 ACP. Um, and then it depends on what you want it for. I wouldn't suggest a guy going out and plinking to use a 45 the whole time because it's got so much more recoil to it. Right. Um, for what I use, I like to use a 9mm on the range and say a 40 or 45 for protection, but there's no reason to, uh, to go out to the practice range and waste up all your 45 ammunition, uh, wasting your money, when you can do the same thing with a 9mm or a 22 uh, and save your money, and it's the same exact concept of how you hold, how you present, how you shoot, how you see the sight picture, how you take the fact of the trigger, how you press the trigger, it's all the, it's all the same. If you can't shoot something with a 22, you can't do it with a 45. All right. And so it would really depend on a user's application, what he or she wants to learn in the, in the application they want to use it for. You know, Houston, let's, let's call a spade a spade here because, quite frankly, the way the world is today, and you know as well as I do, living in the rural area of southern Idaho, the police uh, can't be all things to all people, and they can't be there in five minutes. And we have to know how to protect ourselves, and we have to know what to do and what not to do. Do you go into those aspects in your class? <laughs> With me, I... Uh I don't get too much into it. I just show the user how to properly handle their firearm. Now, I do have a, I partnered up with a company called Legal Heat. They're out of uh, Utah. And what they do is they teach a four hour uh, class on just on the legality if you were to get into a situation defending yourself, when to defend yourself, um, what exactly is gonna happen when you defend yourself um, as far as the legal standpoint goes. And so I let those guys take care of that. Um, I do the Idaho Enhanced to Weapons Permit, and then I just do the four-hour legal portion of that permit, and my, uh, my legal heat instructors, they do the four-hour legal portion. There is a point, and it's happened twice in my life, to where uh, there was a couple of circumstances where a gun and uh, security were necessary, and I can see that a class like yours of knowing what to do, knowing how to handle things, and trying to remain relatively calm and cool uh, with the weapon is essential. And uh, this course that you have, what do you basically go into? Uh, give us kind of a rough synopsis as to what you teach over a two-day school. Sure. Uh, I've got, depending on the class you're going to take, I start out with a, a real basic class, um, and, I, and I say that, and, and I think it's pretty basic, but, um, you know, and, and the one I'm explaining is, is certainly uh, easily understood by, by most people, but it's just in detail a lot more that most people don't get, uh, that they haven't prior, that they're not prior heard of this, this instruction. Now, I go over... Um, right off the bat, I go for proper sight picture, um, aligning the top edge of the front sight with the back edge of the, of the back sight, making sure the same amount of light is on both sides of the front sight as you're looking through the back sight. I'll go over proper grip with your strong hand, the exact touch points I want upon it, the proper grip with your support hand. Then they can be different depending on the gun, depending if it's a revolver and automatic. I'll go into uh, grip pressures. Uh, typically, your weak hand 
has a lot more grip involved, uh, keeping your strong hand relaxed so you can manipulate the trigger finger a lot better on your strong hand, and your strong hand is the one that has a, your trigger finger on it. Uh, most people, they have way too much grip in their strong hand, so when they pull the trigger, um, their whole strong hand manipulates the sight picture before the bullet leaves the barrel of the pistol. So we get into relaxing the strong hand, more of the support hand. Um, get into a little bit about putting pressure upon the back side of your grip, using your your lap, using your chest, to make sure the grip doesn't come apart as the gun is being fired, especially on your high caliber 337s and, and 45s. Mm -hmm. um, I get into a little bit of trigger manipulation. So a lot of the times your, your trigger has what's called slack in it. It's a degree of play within the trigger that you've got to take out uh, before you want to fire the pistol. So once you take the slack out of the pistol, your pistol's going to hit what's called the wall. And then the wall is the point of contact in the trigger that has defined resistance within the trigger pull. And you slightly put pressure on that wall uh, at constant pounds per pressure to ensure a correct shot. I see. And then, as the gun's going off, you can reset that trigger um, during the recoil cycle. And by the time the front sights land back onto the target, I can essentially already take my slack out for the next shot, be landed on the wall, and be ready to shoot again. So, and then you do that multiple times through a target array. You need to be able to have a correct grip the whole entire time. As you're going across, if my support hand falls off, then typically my strong hand will take too much control. And then when the strong hand takes too much control, um, it, it hammers down on that side of the pistol, and then you'll, you'll miss. Um, by basically pulling the trigger too hard with your strong hand, all of your strong hand fingers come into play, and you'll miss well. And then I get into the stance, and then for the real, and, and that's basically the men's A to Z class. Um, it's, it's just mostly instruction for the first full day shooting paper at that close range. Right. You'll be able to see exactly what effects when you do something wrong or right it has on your point of impact upon the target. So the first day is all paper, and then the second day I reinforce everything we learned on the first day, um, all on steel targets. I've got you know over 400 targets at the shot shooting range and a ton of those uh, you shoot them they knock down and push the button and they all come back up down range um, and I've got a lot of stationary so we work on and then for my intermediate classes we do a lot of we do a lot of draws moving and shooting I, uh, I'll get into timing your shot to get the timer out putting you under more stress um, competing against each other and I break down your times as you're shooting so I'll tell you exactly your splits in between your shots so let's just say a guy has a he takes to a target and shoots six times at one target. Well, I'll go and time that, and then I'll tell him the exact splits between his shots, mm -hmm. and those splits should be very identical to each other. I mean, the guy's shooting, he shouldn't differ more than a tenth between his splits. Now let's just say he's got a split between a half a second on the first shot, and then second to third, he's got a half a second, third to fourth, he's got a half a second. You know, that's a very consistent cadence, meaning that he's doing the same thing with his trigger finger every single time. Thus, uh, he's able to be very consistent. So when I compete, which I have uh, finished second in the world featuring championships this year at the uh, Steel Challenge Championships in, in St. George, Utah, and I'm not exactly, you know, the fastest guy out there, but I can be very consistent in the top three the whole way, the whole way across. Right. So you get a guy that's faster, but he blows the stage up, and he's out of the match. So I just I teach a lot of consistency about um, shooting a firearm. Well, let me ask you a couple of quick questions here. I'm almost out of time. Uh, and these are kind of speculation and uh, your own personal opinion questions. The way things are going in this country, I'm a big advocate of people having guns, understanding guns, and being able to protect themselves. But there seems to be so many people on the left that uh, want to make it that much more difficult for our protection. They want to have the special palm grips and finger grips that can only identify where that person or the gun won't work or fire. They want everything with trigger locks. They want all the ammunition locked up in another part of the home. All of this bodes not well for a person that's trying to, in an immediate situation, to protect themselves. What are your thoughts about the liberal left and what they're trying to do to make it harder for us to protect our families? <laughs> I don't get too political, but I, uh, I, in, in America, especially in Idaho, I don't see that ever going down like that. I don't see it going through legislation we got. I mean, I'm doing a, a fundraiser today for Senator Crapo, and I'm shooting at his at his fundraiser, you know. So at, at the current moment, I don't see that going on in Idaho, but 
I would assume if, the, if you'd like to be able to protect yourself, you have, by all means, every right necessary to do that. Now, Houston, what about the classes? How often, I've only got about two minutes left here, how often do you teach classes and how do people sign up? I've got classes uh, open once every weekend through November 1st, and then I open in March. So I go through March through November. Um, every weekend I've got an open class. I've got typically once a month men's A to Z class. That's just a... Uh, you know, your intro class into my shooting school, and then from there, you can take my intermediate class, you can take my rifle class, my, sport, my shotgun or sporting clay class, but that first one's at men's A to Z. The women have the same choice. They have a women's A to Z open uh, once a month. I do that. Idaho Enhancement to Weapons Permit, I do that pretty much every Saturday, Sunday of, uh, of a month. That I can take to the second or third Saturday, Sunday of the month. And then I've got one month where... And another class where the intermediate shotgun and rifle comes, of course, comes into play. And then I do a ton of private classes. And what you would do is you'd go to shawshooting.com. That's S-H-A-W, shooting.com. And then i check out my website, go watch the videos, go to the, uh, the course descriptions, go to the photos, go to the lodging. We can see a longhouse lodging there, on property lodging. Um, and then what you'd really want to do is go to class schedule. And then the classes that I have available, you can click on the link on the class schedule, sign up online, or if you'd like a private class in the middle of the day, you simply see what classes, what what, uh, what what date I have blank on my website, and then just shoot me an email, and my email's on the top of the website. All right, very well stated. You know, I'm going to get in touch with you in the not-too-distant future and try to come over myself. Houston Shaw of the Shaw Shooting School over in Hagerman. Thank you so much for being on my program this morning. I really appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thanks for calling, bud. Thank you, sir. Very interesting young man, and his dad also was a very accomplished shooter. And at one time, he was the best shooter in the world in the 1980s. So, like father, like son. And uh, Houston Shaw of the Shaw Shooting School. And Gina, no, I am not going to say that fast five times. Um, anyway, I want to remind everybody about Lee's Furniture Floors and more. 459 Overland in Burley with all the couches, all the love seats, all the recliners, the power recliners, everything there for your home beautification and comfort. And by the way, talking about recliners, they have at Lee's Furniture Floors and more, they've got, well, I think it's the largest selection of recliners you'll ever want to see. And you got to get in there and try one on. It's not one chair fits everybody. No, there's there's chairs that fit people that are real tall better and real short and those that are real thin and those of us that are not. Anyway, you just stop in there and check out all the chairs, all the furniture, everything, at least furniture, floors, and more. All the carpet, all the bedroom sets, all the mattresses, everything is there for your comfort and home beautification at least furniture, floors, and more. 459 Overland in Burley. Some really, really nice people. Better have, <coughs> excuse me, hold on a second. <coughs> excuse me, doggone allergies this morning. And I apologize for that. Time for a weather update. And the weather this hour is brought to you by Sportsman's Warehouse, 1940 Bridgeview Boulevard in Twin Falls. Our old buddy Reese Widmeyer and the rest of the crew. The great indoors for everything you want to do outdoors right there at Sportsman's Warehouse. Whether it's hunting, fishing, archery, camping, boating, you name it, it's all there at Sportsman's Warehouse. Get in the store today and just browse. You're going to love it at Sportsman's Warehouse in Twin Falls. And right now, here is Michael Rogers' weather. Hey, hello, everyone. Michael Rogers is up at the ranch. Clouds and rain is still with us all the way through Friday night. Scattered showers today, 18 for the high, 60 for the overnight. Low looks to come out of all of this by Saturday. Sunny. And all the way through Monday. Sunny. But right now, today is yucky. Scattered showers. Enjoy the weather. It's the only weather you got. All right, Michael, thank you very much. Brought to everybody by Sportsman's Warehouse, 1940 Bridgeview Boulevard in Twin Falls. The great indoors for those of us that love the great outdoors. Gina, um, personal question, but did you ever go to a shooting school, or didn't you have to growing up in the Elk River? No, I never went to a shooting school. I went to Hunter Safety, but that was about it. Okay, and uh, pretty good with a rifle and a pistol? Yes. 
<laughs> that was a simple, short answer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my favorite gun that we used to have, uh, my own, I had a, a 38 uh, six shooter revolver. That was my favorite. Uh, we used to have a, a 45 revolver. And uh, that one I wasn't quite so fond of because it was a little bit large of a gun for me. Nine millimeters are okay, but I don't like uh, the, the slide on it. I, if I'm going to have a gun, I prefer a uh, revolver. Okay, now, you said a 45. Was this one like the old Colt 45, the single action? Uh, no, it was not a single action, I don't believe. Oh, okay. But uh, it was huge. And the recoil was one that left an indentation in your forehead? <laughs> Actually, uh, the ex-husband would have to stand behind me and just kind of hold my shoulders. So, and then, you know, w when you're shooting it, you have to go up and, and, and move your head after after the gun is done shot or you're going to whack yourself. You know, and that's not funny because I remember my Uncle Bud used to have a whole bunch of collection of the old type pistols. Uh -huh. And he had an old Colt 44. Ooh. And I held that thing out at arm's length and sighted down the barrel. And the next thing I knew, I was on my way to the emergency ward with a broken nose. And they come back and hit me right smack dab in the nose. Oh, yeah, they've got quite the recall and they're going to come back and get you. The, the one incident that I did have is I uh, went out hunting with my dad, and uh, we were out deer hunting, and he had me shoot a thirty out 6 Well, that's not the gun that I had practiced shooting in Hunter's Head. And so when uh, I shot the gun and the recoil came back, I had the uh, scope half moon on the oh. Oh, oh, well, listen, uh, there you go. Annie Oakley is alive and well and over at our studios. <laughs> you betcha. Thank you. Hey, by the way, we're going to have a slight change today. We're going to do the Starving to Death right now. Some great places to go and enjoy lunch. I'm not going to be on the air tomorrow. Uh, Gina and Sharon are going to carry the ball for me. So we're going to talk to you a little bit about Taco Bandito at 2301 Overland and Berlin with that Southern Baked Burrito, either soft shell or grilled shell chicken or steak made that special way that only Kip knows. Oh, it is delicious. You're going to love it. Along with that, they've got the Tamalito burritos and they got the taco salad burritos and they got all the nacho burritos and the nachos and the chimichangas. The food is fantastic at Taco Bandito 2301 Overland in Burley. You stop in today. Call her. I'll be there in a minute. Don't forget two burgers, etc. 124 South of Night in Rupert and 700 North Overland and Burley. Ah, oh, summer. And you can get root beer floats. Listen to this. 16-ounce root beer floats after 3 p.m. for only 99 cents. I'll take 10. There you go. And they've got all the hamburgers and cheeseburgers and everything for your enjoyment for summertime great eating at Burgers Etc. in Rupert and Burley. Let's not forget our friends at Stevo's 290 South, 600 West of Hayburn, Food made the way you like it. Oh, my goodness. And they got that beautiful patio over there. And you can sit outside and just soak up the sunshine and enjoy the food. It is great. You got to try that pork chops with salad and choice potatoes. They got friendly service that servers and very dedicated staff. Stop in and enjoy it today. You're going to love it. You're going to thank me. Steve-O's, 290 South, 600 West of Hayburn. Let's move on over to Duck Uglies at 163. West Highway 30 in Burley, right next to Barry Equipment and Rental. Oh, my. Check out the ribeye steak. Oh, along with the baked potato, you're going to love it. And, of course, the New York steak, the shrimp, the salmon. They got all kinds of delicious sandwiches. You are going to enjoy Duck Uglies at 163 West Highway 30 in Burley. And they got music in there on the weekends. Oh, my. Fun times at Duck Uglies. Last but not least, you're going to stop at the AC drive-in. Mm -hmm. 601 East Main in Burley. And don't forget the AC drive-in, known for all their milkshakes, all the flavors, any flavor you want. They were voted also to have the best hamburger award for this area in the Minicash area. Stop in and enjoy the famous Farmer Brown Burgers, the Ranch Burgers, three-piece fish and chips and small fry, only seven and a quarter. You're going to love it right there at 601 East Main in Burley, the AC drive-in. And those are just a few great places to go if you're hungry and starving to death. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Thanks for your patience. Yes, sir. Oh, I got lots of patience, that Bill. Okay, sir. 
Hey, yes, I enjoyed that uh, guy talking about the uh, handguns and, and shooting. Yes. I uh, I carried a three fifty seven Colt Python on my hip for uh, anyway twenty years while I was guiding uh, bear and cougar hunts. Mm-hmm. And uh, I tell you that's a that's a fantastic weapon. I uh, I have been a handgun. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I just have really been a fanatic for them. Uh, I've had, I don't know how many, but I've given a lot away to my uh, kids and grandkids. But I still have that 357 Magnum and got about three or four others here. I just uh, bought Joyce a uh, uh, Walther 380, and uh, that is probably the smoothest semi automatic I ever. I ever fired that. And you know something, Fred? I'm almost out of time, but I want to say this. You're a gentleman that knows guns. You've lived with guns and worked with guns all your life. And I think that was the thing I wanted to stress on the school, the Houston Shaw Shooting School, is that we all need to know the proper techniques and everything to be that much more effective. Wouldn't you agree? I agree totally. They need to take a school. All right, sir. If they haven't handled them, why they definitely need to go to a school and learn how to handle a weapon safely. All right, Fred, i got to run to the news, but God bless you. Thanks for your call. Appreciate it. I'll be back in six. Don't anybody leave. Great guests coming up next hour. Thank you, Brock. Oh, good morning, good morning. Welcome back. Zeb at the Ranch. I'm Zeb Bell. And, of course, our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Leshwam Tire Centers. And, of course, all seven locations, including some of our great advertisers like Lee's Furniture Floors and More at 459 Overland and Burley. And our friends at Western Way Services, always at your disposal. Get on the route service today. Call them at 734-6969. Hey, by the way, what is happening over at the Chadwick Sports Grill for lunch today? You're going to love this one. It's one of my favorites. Chicken teriyaki with bacon shish kebabs. Oh, my. Chicken teriyaki with bacon shish kebabs with choice of potato, vegetables, and super salad. Oh, they always have such a great menu. And now that's the special for today at the Chadwick Sports Grill, 139 West Main in and Burley, you stop in and enjoy a great lunch. Right now, we're going to go to the phone lines and enjoy a gentleman that has been on my program many, many times. And when it comes to education and educational stories, I rely on him for his fact-finding to tell us all about it. And we say good morning to EAGnews.org, Kyle Olson. Kyle, good morning. How are you? I was ahead of myself, and I got Dan Kish on the line. Oh, I mean, he's next half hour. And okay, well, my apologies, and I will get uh, Kyle Olson on. Yeah, I would appreciate that. Kyle Olson scheduled for 10.06, and hopefully he'll be in his office, and we can get him scheduled, and then we'll have Dan Kish in about a half an hour at uh, 10.30 this morning. So uh, while she is checking that out and getting our proper person on for this half hour, we'll remind everybody. Tomorrow, I've got to run down, and actually I'm going to start this afternoon, to the Golden Spike Rodeo in Tremont, and uh, Sharon Hardy Mills and Gina are going to handle the reins tomorrow, and they're going to kind of have a ladies' approach to what's going on in all the news on uh, Thursday's program, so it should be very, very interesting, and we invite you to call them and uh, offer them suggestions and or questions or whatever tomorrow morning on the show, Zeb at the Ranch. Things have been going so well here that uh, we're going to be making some changes changes in the next couple of weeks and months, as a matter of fact, on this show to try to expand into other areas. And so, uh, again, thanks to Sharon Hardy Mills and Gina Jameson for all their support. Let's see if we have our guest on the phone. Uh, I got the right one. There you go, Gina. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, when I said a moment ago, when it comes to educational matters across the United States, I trust this man to give us all the 
information with EAGnews.org. Here's Mr. Kyle Olson. Good morning, sir. How are you? I'm doing well, sir. Thanks for having me. Kyle, I want to start things off on a little different note this morning and get your opinion on something. Uh, last night, I was watching Fox News, and I was listening to all the various reports about Ferguson, Missouri, and about all the turmoil and the chaos going on. And one thing that they said stuck out in my mind, and it was in regards to schools in Ferguson can't start their classes because of this chaos and this anarchy that's going on. And they said, many children are not getting their proper meals for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And the reason that stood out to me is, have we become in our society and many places across the United States so dependent upon others to feed our children that parental responsibility no longer exists? Yeah, I, I think you're exactly right. Um, and what's what's been happening, I think, is this mission creep of schools. And unfortunately, um, a number of parents are willingly um, ceding that sort of authority and that responsibility. And so, you know, first we had the, the National School Lunch Program, which um, either kids can, can buy a, a lunch or if they qualify economically, um, or, or, you know, related to income, then they're able to get a free or reduced lunch. That was the first thing. And then we started seeing schools providing breakfast um, to kids. And now we're seeing schools in uh, New Jersey, in Florida, around elsewhere around the country now providing dinner. And, uh, and so we've got schools that are providing three meals a day, um, taking that, not, not necessarily taking that responsibility, but... Um, but, but one way or the other, um, abdicating that responsibility from parents, and parents are giving that up. And, uh, and to me, it's just another example of how progressive, progressivism is, is uh, rotting out uh, and, and uh, holding out uh, parental responsibility in America. Kyle, once we start something like this, once we've let the uh, the cork out of the bottle, and uh, how do you ever wean parents off these programs? How do you ever teach them, tell them, or implore them to try to work and feed and take care of their own kids? It seems like it's a never-ending battle, and it won't ever get any better. Right, and, and no, and I don't think it will. Um, and it's just, it's not just parents, but it's the school districts. Um, a lot of people, are, or a lot of districts, I should say, are going along with these uh, school lunch regulations and the right you know the regulations and rules about bake sales and those sorts of things because they're hooked on the federal money that goes along with the regulations and so we're seeing some school districts that are are standing up and are fighting back uh the georgia state board of education for example um uh, is poised tomorrow to vote uh to issue or allow exemptions from the snack rules that regulate what's sold in vending machines and uh, bake sales and those sorts of things. And so we're seeing some, some pushback, some fight back, but, but you're right, I, I'm, I'm concerned like you are, um, that we're just seeing this you know, progressivism continue to creep in America. And, uh, and unfortunately, a lot of people are willing, uh, willingly taking it. You know, and the other part of this, Kyle, is I guess you, you can call me old-fashioned. You can call me an old fogey or whatever. But I see this as another kind of a chink in the armor, another spoke out of the wheel of trying to make families more important in America. I think mealtime, whether it's breakfast, whether it's lunch, or whether it's dinner during the supper hour, uh, sitting down and, and kind of sharing what happened during the day, and with these kids never home to enjoy a meal and the responsibility of the parents lacking, I see a complete deterioration of the family. Am I wrong? No, I, I think you're exactly right. Um, I think there's a number of reasons why that's happening. But see, the, the government, uh, governmental leaders, whether it's President Obama um, or members of Congress or governors or whoever, they really they have two two paths that they can take. They can either call on parents to be more responsible, to take more ownership, um, to educate their children, to raise their children, and those sorts of things. They can take that path um, and, and call on more personal responsibility. 
or they can take the path of where we're just going to do it ourselves. And because you parents are so busy and you clearly aren't smart enough to figure this out for yourself, we're just going to pass rules and laws and regulations and those sorts of things to help you out. And that's the direction that progressives have taken, um, both Republicans and Democrats. Um, I mean, we have we have Republicans that, you know, have that sort of condescending attitude as well and go along with these these sorts of programs. And so, you know, I would like to get us back to a place where um, there is parental responsibility, there is personal responsibility. There's this idea that if you have children, you're expected to raise the children, um, and if, if uh, and, and you should instill values and and, um, and morals and those sorts of things as a parent, and not abdicate that responsibility to the government or to a school or to anyone else. Um, to me, it, it's high time that parents be more responsible. Absolutely. Now, in the time remaining, I wanted to talk to you about uh, what happened in Warren County, Kentucky, with a high school student that uh, just wasn't really too crazy about what was on his lunch tray. Maybe you could fill us in on that story. Sure. So, um, social media is a fascinating thing, and it's another it's another way that uh, school district, or excuse me, that um, uh, average people are able to communicate with a broader audience. I mean, typically, traditionally, as you know, the media was the, primarily the way to do that. But with social media, that's different. And so, what we've been seeing is um, is students and parents tweeting pictures of lunches. In fact, if you go on Twitter and just and just search. Uh, Obama lunch or Michelle lunch, you can see these different pictures. And so he tweeted this picture of really a pretty paltry sort of lunch. And um, and according to the parent, uh, he's six foot three and he's ex expected to live on this you know sort of thing and be sustained by this sort of thing. And um, and you know I did, when I looked at this, I thought you know we wouldn't even expect prisoners, detainees in Guantanamo Bay to be treated like this. And here we are uh, raising our next generation this way. And this is why I say, going back to what we just talked about, parents need to take responsibility. And instead of complaining about this sort of thing, either opt your kid out of, out of this ridiculousness, either completely out of the school, um, or pack a home pack lunch and send that and not expect the government to, to you know feed our children and and do this sort of thing because clearly they're failing I mean it just is obvious whether it comes to common core or lunches or uh, sex ed or whatever it is the government is failing they are corrupting our values and um, and we shouldn't just simply go along with it and, and put up with it anymore well Kyle you know uh, you and I've talked about this subject before and uh uh, what about the home lunches? Let's start there. Uh, I have heard stories, and I think you reported on some of them, where students said, oh, no, I'm not going to have a school lunch. I'm not getting enough to eat. I'm not getting enough nutrition. Mom packs a lunch, and then all of a sudden the school absconds with the lunch. Right. Yeah, and there, there have been a, a couple different instances in America where that's happened. Um, it's been primarily on the school level and not necessarily the district or the state level. Um, but as we see more, you know, discontent with the school lunch program, we're seeing more kids bring a home pack lunch. And so my my prediction, um, especially after watching what's been happening in Britain, where the, the government now regulates home pack lunches and they actually have school employees who will look through kids' lunches and approve them or, or disapprove them mm. and require the student to eat a school lunch. My my prediction is that um, is that the USDA and Michelle Obama that that will be their next step because what they'll say, um, and in fact there have been studies recently that have come out that have shown well because of the new regulations home pack lunches aren't as healthy as school lunches, and so my prediction is that that will be their next step. They will have uh, they will try to regulate home pack lunches, and I think when that happens. Um, you know, we've been seeing some pushback about the bake sales and the, you know, the holiday parties and those sorts of things. 
So when when they start regulating home pack lunches, I think they'll have a whole new fight on their hands. Absolutely. You know, the thing that bothers me so much, Kyle, and again, you and I have talked about this in the past, but it bears repeating. This Obama administration, especially with Mama Obama, saying, oh, one size fits all. No, it doesn't. We're talking about this kid in Kentucky that's 6'3 and probably over 200 pounds. We're talking about football players. We're talking about people that run cross country. We're talking about athletes. They can't live on the one size fits all lunch. That, that's exactly right, but that's the expectation. Um, and you know, and you have different foods uh, because of your your culture. Uh, here in Michigan, we have different foods because of our culture. I mean, things are things are different around the country. I mean, this is one of the reasons we have states and states' rights because. There are, America is a, is a diverse sort of place, and that's a, that's a good, healthy thing. And so, uh, but what we've been seeing is, is the increase in the federal government um, deciding and, and meddling in local affairs and deciding these sorts of one-size-fits-all policies um, shall be applied across the country. And so, to me, that's one of the things that really has not been discussed, especially in the national media is that this really is one size fits all. There is no difference for gender um, or for you know how, how active you are in sports or just otherwise. There, there are no, there are no um, you know, uh, differences in the rules. And so it truly is one size fits all. And that's one of the reasons why it's not working. Do you think, Kyle, that if most parents, and I say most because you're not going to get a, a majority of numbers, but if most parents would take the time and the effort to just occasionally drop into a school and observe what their children are getting fed through the lunch line because of the Obama administration, they would be outraged and absolutely we might be able to implement some change. Yeah, I, I think the more parental involvement, the better. I mean, the, and, the, and not just parents, but taxpayers. I mean, ultimately, we own the government schools. If we pay sales taxes or property taxes, we own the schools. Um, we, we vote in school board elections. Um, I mean, the, the, the taxpayers should be very involved in all of this. And if they see that their money is being wasted or that... Um, the traditional American values are being corrupted or whatever the case may be, um, I, I think it's our responsibility as parents and grandparents and just the taxpaying public to be involved in these sorts of things. So uh, I, I think that's a great idea. You know, the thing that really got me on this little news story that uh, I got from uh, your office was the fact that uh, they were saying, oh, these kids have so much to eat while it's piled high and a great big large mound of lima beans or lima beans, whichever way you want to pronounce it. If there's anything I personally at 66 years of age can't stand, it's lima beans. <laughs> Well, uh, I'm I'm right with you on that. All right. Um, but yeah, but this is but that's the idea. Is that well, if we just if we just give these kids this pile of vegetables and this pile of fruit, well, that will sustain them. Um, I mean, there's, there's, it's just it's incredible that there's this disconnect, and then it's even more incredible that these are supposedly the experts. And then they look at people like you and me, and we don't have these education degrees, and therefore we possibly, you know, we can't possibly know what we're talking about. Kyle, real quick in the time remaining, uh, we're looking at the beginning of the 14-15 school year, 2014 and 15. What are some of your worries and concerns that, uh, not only with Common Core, but uh, as you look into the crystal ball, what are your concerns going into the beginning of the school year? Well, I, I think secular progressivism is going to continue. Um, now that we're seeing more schools update their textbooks and lesson plans and curriculum to be aligned with Common Core, um, we have been seeing a revision of American history. Uh, we've been seeing a revision of, of science and all sorts of things to fit the progressive agenda. Uh, we wrote yesterday, and in, in, uh, in Todd Starnes from Fox News um, wrote about how a school in uh, South Carolina issued its, you know, daily ritual that was printed out um, to kids, and one of the one of the portions was the Pledge of Allegiance. But under God was eliminated from the Pledge of Allegiance. No, no. And when they were called out on that, they said, "Oh, it was a proofreading error." 
and it, it may well have been a proofreading error, but the point is, it was never caught. Um, and, and there's just this constant assault on traditional American values, on the principles that made America great. And I, I just, you know, here we are just a few days into the school year, and here we've got these stories coming up already. And so I just implore parents, they have got to stay on top of these sorts of things. And when they see that sort of thing happen, they need to call it out. They need to expose it. Um, and we need to, you know, be vigilant in, in fighting back uh, against progressivism in schools. Do you think, last question, uh, Kyle, do you think that with your efforts and Glenn Beck and many others uh, in regards to exposing some of the hidden secrets about Common Core and education itself and opening up the door? for more questions. Have you been successful? Are you happy so far with the net result? And uh, are you seeing more transitional changes away from Common Core? Well, we're seeing a number of states have revealed Common Core that we're placing it. Evidently, we have lost the connection uh, with Kyle. I don't know if he can hear me or not, but we had a bunch of uh, warblings, and all of a sudden, we lost the connection with Kyle. And uh, Gina, I don't know if he's still on the line or not. Is he? Uh, he's, he's still there. He's just voicing out. Yeah, maybe. I'll tell you what, I'll, we'll put him on hold. If you would please try to thank him for his efforts. Evidently, we had uh, him voip out, and I don't want to be rude and not say thank you, but I, I don't know if he can hear me or not. Uh, I'm going to have him back on next week, and we'll finish that discussion. Caller, I apologize. We lost him, but go ahead with your question or statement, if you would, please. They hung up as well. Boy, I'm having a lot of success, are I not? No. <laughs> Holy cow. Anyway, um, I want to say thank you to Kyle Olson. He's a very, very dear friend, lives back in Michigan, and he's with EAGnews.org, and uh, he is absolutely excellent when it comes to anything on education issues, and I certainly appreciate him being on the program this morning. Uh, call back. Um, give me a jingle for 436-221-866-927-4587. I'd like to hear what you have to say this morning and uh, take your call. By the way, uh, the other day I got word that our dear friend Russell Smith is a little bit under the weather and not doing so well health-wise. And uh, I just want to ask you to take the time to send that man a little bit of a cheery card. Send him a little bit of a smiley face card and a nice little note on the inside and tell him how much we appreciate him. I, I think the world and all of my lunch munchers. And he's been very dedicated to going to lunch munch, as have many, many others. And I, I get so attached to the various personalities and the people that go to lunch munch, and I don't want to see anybody be sick or anybody not being able to get out and around and everything. And I just want to say to everybody connected with lunch munch, God bless you all, and we are going to have our next lunch Lunch Bunch. It is coming up next Thursday, the 28th, 28th of August already. Can you believe that? And uh, it's Denny's Restaurant. Don't forget it. And we've got door prizes galore. We've got a lot of great things we're going to be giving away. Compliments of our friends at Walmart and Handsome Mortuary and Smith's Food King. And so put it on your calendar for next Thursday. It's going to be Lunch Bunch at Denny's Restaurant in Burley. Absolutely, Thomas and Terry and everybody being excellent, and we certainly appreciate him. By the way, did you get a chance to talk to Kyle at all, Gina? I did, and he he could barely hear me, and I could barely hear him, but I did thank him, and that uh, we would probably call him later. I, I don't know. Why, why does that happen? You're an engineer extraordinaire. Why does that all of a sudden happen with the VoIP, do you know? Uh, sometimes uh, the way cell towers work is they go on rotation, and uh, sometimes they, it just drops signal, or uh, maybe he's talking too fast and uh, the signal just can't keep up with what uh, he's saying, and so it just wipes out. Oh, okay. Well, that's a good explanation. And in just a very few minutes, guess what you get to do? I get to call Dan Kish. All over again. Over. It's funny. I got him on the phone, and I'm like, and pardon my French, I just said, 
sorry, Dan, I'm a jackass. <laughs> and he's like, no, Judy, you're not. He's like, actually, I would prefer to be on there. I said, but I got to go. I got to call somebody back. So we had a good giggle. No, I tell you what, when you said that, I looked at my sheet and I thought, whoa, she's really trying to get me off the air early. Oh, I was like, oh, I am a half hour early. We have somebody on the line for you. <laughs> okay. Um, did you say I had a call? Yes. Oh, okay. I'll take that before the break, and then we'll go to the break at the bottom of the hour. Good morning. You're on the air. Hi. I was just going to tell Gina to tell you, because I was, wasn't going to say this on the air, but um, Gal and Helen Bradley Rotten. Yes. Their daughter had a stroke Sunday, and she passed away. Oh, I That's am sorry. you'd want to know. I am so, so sorry, and uh, I will relay that information to my wife immediately, and that was very nice of you to give me a call. I appreciate that, and our God's blessings go out to the Bradleys, and it's that type of thing that we don't want to hear, but we're all a close-knit family, and we wish them the very best with our prayers. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, that's a sad note. I'm so sorry to hear that. Um, but right now, we will send it back to our main studios. I'll be back in three minutes. And now, back to Zeb at the Ranch on AM 1230 KBAR. To reach Zeb, call 436-2244 or toll free 1-866-927-4587. And now, here is Zeb Bell. You know, it must be... A uh, day of sorrow and sadness because uh, not only did I just mention all those folks about the lunch bunch uh, and some of the uh, devastating news that we had about some of our friends, but then we got the mail just during the break and we understand that another lady's not doing so well and we want to give her God's blessings and that's Betty Register that has been at lunch bunch a long, long time. Wonderful, wonderful lady along with her daughter Paula. I just, uh, you know... It's hard to uh, get so attached to so many people on this program. There's been so much kindness bestowed upon Deanne and I, and so much friendship, and you draw close to people on various events and various uh, uh, activities like Lunch Brunch and some of the remote broadcasts and everything, and it's just really hard to hear that people are having some really hard times, and uh, all I can do is say, you're in our prayers. God love you all. Ah. Anyhow, I want to move right now, if I can, to a gentleman that's been on my program many, many times, and I put my faith in him. He knows what's going on with energy or the lack of. Institute for Energy Research, Dan Kish. Good morning, Dan. How are you? Well, good morning, Zeb. I'm doing fine, sir, and I hope you are as well. Well, uh, you know, it's always tough in this business, and I've been in this uh, radio business now for well over 44 years, and uh, the hard part is you make friends all over the United States, and you have friends at various locations for various activities, and when you find out they're not doing well, it just makes for a little bit of a bump in the road, let me tell you. I, I understand it's, it, uh, it, it focuses us on things and reminds us that uh, we need to include folks in our prayers. You know, Absolutely. Life. Well, Dan. A, you know, full of life is life. Amen. Amen. And God bless you for your thoughts right there. I appreciate it. Uh, on the other side of the coin. I also feel this morning more so than ever before, and it's, uh, I think I'm more solidified for action against evil and action against uh, negative forces. And when I think about negative forces, I look at like liberal uh, billionaire Tom Steyer uh, that's trying to be a one-man wrecking crew for all of us in America that want to get up in the morning and go to work and enjoy this sustenance of life, of trying to make a living for our family. He wants us all live in a cave and burn buffalo dung on a national climate change policy. Tell us about what liberal billionaire Tom Steyer is trying to do. Yeah, I, I kind of share you, you know, my, my mother used to tell me not to stick my nose in other people's business. I think uh, a lot of us heard that. And, um, and yet we, we seem to be, you know, I don't know if you've noticed it, but modern times sort of dictate that we've got these folks who think they're smarter than us. And and you know, listen. I don't begrudge him his his, his money at all. He grew up uh, very wealthy and and made his own money and did all the rest. But 
why he's got to run around spending his money to try to convince politicians to make it harder on the rest of us is is beyond me and frankly you'd think he'd have enough of, of his own troubles but what he's what he's doing is he's, he's pouring 50 million dollars of his own money promised to do that and uh, pledged to get another 50 million dollars from folks who uh, uh, you know trade money or, or, or do whatever they did, have done to do it to uh, try to elect politicians this fall that are going to support all of uh, uh, President Obama, I almost said Al Gore, but uh, uh, <laughs> pretty much the same thing. President Obama's energy agenda, which includes higher energy prices and, you know, not being able to set the uh, temperature of our own thermostats and, uh, um, you know, tell us what kind of cars to drive. And, and, and frankly, they, they, they wouldn't know the back end of a horse. Um, but they're sure experts on our energy, and, and, and that's what he's doing, and he's doing it all over the place. And he's even running commercials dealing with the climate. He runs commercials dealing with taxes and dealing with whatever he thinks will get traction someplace to just try to keep Harry Reid calling all the shots back here in Washington and stopping everything that we might be doing to raise energy production and, and, and drop prices for Americans. And I, I think all of us would go for that, except for Thomas Dyer. Dan, how does this guy pull this off? I mean, is the messaging uh, due to the fact that America has been dumbed down, if you will, over the years, and uh, a lot of citizens uh, believe and are hooked on this green energy of solar and wind power, how does he get the message through? Are Americans that uh, uh, numb now to what's going on? On and how they're being affected that they don't care? Well, to some degree, but it sort of depends on where you are. I mean, what I've found, Zeb, I, it's just like, listen, you want to know about cattle? You go to places where people have cattle, right? Um, and you, you want to know about energy? You go to places where people produce energy. And, and, and unfortunately, you know, the places where all these masterminds want to tell us what to do is Washington, D.C., and New York, and L.A., and the like. And they don't know anything about it. Again, they wouldn't know the back end from the front end of a horse, but they could tell you all you want about horses. And that's what they do with energy. So they, you know, they, somebody, uh, it, it, it's really amazing. I mean, I, you know, give me an engineer over a politician any day, uh, or a lawyer for that matter, um, when it comes to figuring out what works. And so they basically, anything that's old, anything that has been around for a while, they're against that. They're for everything new, and what they forget is, um, you know, there's a reason we use the stuff we do. And, and um, they're good reasons. They've been tested over time. Um, uh, and, and I think that's basically what it is. It's, it's this desire to constantly have something new, the newest this, the newest that. We've all got some of that in us. But when you're talking about the stuff that keeps our lights on and, and um, you know, allows us to control our, uh, 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 our environments and our homes and, and uh, travel to uh, see loved ones or conduct business or whatever it is, putting people who know nothing about it in charge is, um, is, is, is not the smartest thing it, unless you ask them, in which case they think they ought to be in charge of everything. Dan, I don't mean to sound uh, try when I ask this question, and I don't mean to sound like I'm unknowledgeable, but really, when you come right down to brass tacks, Tom Steyer and others of his ilk, Al Gore, as a matter of fact, what do they really want? Do they want a seclusionist type society where only a handful of them are really in charge, enjoying things, and the rest of us living out on the desert or in a cave, what do they really want with these kind of regressive energy programs? Well, I think what they what they what they want is something that frankly can't make it uh, because it, it isn't here yet. I mean, what they argue they want is is are things that uh, don't work or they're so expensive that they can't work. Because they really don't have any idea about the size of our economy or the breadth of it. Um, these are people who are sort of coddled. I mean, both of them went to the best schools and grew up uh, going to, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, and, and they live in urban environments. And then they think they can dictate to the rest of the country how we make the things that uh, make their life easier. And I think from there, you know, there, there's always been a strong, listen, going back to the Bible, there's always been a strong strong uh, 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 
desires for people to uh, be controlled by their leaders, in essence, and and folks who always thought they were smarter or better or blessed by God if, or, or, or somehow picked, or they just know more than the rest of us. And so, and, and so they want to impose that on us and sort of dictate to the rest of us what we do because they think that way is better. And meanwhile, they fly around in jets and have drivers pick them up everywhere they go. And life's real easy and, um, and, and all the rest. And they kind of forget that, uh, you know, first of all, they don't know how most Americans really live. And secondly, they don't really care um, because, the, you know, there's two types of people, uh, their type and, um, and, and the rest of us, the unwashed, the, uh, the folks who, you know, fight the wars and go off and do things and build the country and, and, um, and, 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 and plow the land. I mean, these, these, aren't, these aren't things that uh, uh, they understand, nor do they care to understand. They just think things sort of appear out of nowhere because people have a good idea. You know, you just touched on something in your verbiage, uh, plow the land was your phrase. Uh, I'm very concerned because I live in a heavy agricultural area. But I am very, very concerned that the three-piece suits and wingtip shoes back on the Potomac have no clue as to what they're destroying with our agricultural program and how much we need energy. We need. It's not going to push a John Deere tractor down the field with a with a propeller, and it's certainly not going to operate that truck by solar power hauling those spuds out of the field. Um, I just don't know if they realize that for a country that feeds the world plus the themselves, where is the food going to come from with a retarded energy program? Well, yeah, I mean, it's, I, it, you know, it's also the fertilizer we use, which is, which is produced, uh, of a large portion of it comes from energy. It's yeah. uh, energy that, uh, in petrochemicals and the like, it's the turning of the pumps, uh, the powering of the pumps, you know, those aren't cheap, uh, to move water from places where it isn't to where it needs to be. And um, all of these things. I mean, agriculture is very, very heavily uh, uh, energy uh, dependent, and and frankly, they don't care about that either. I mean, they, you know, they they don't know what the cost of things in grocery stores are because they don't go to grocery stores. People serve them their food, um, but while they're sitting there having dinner, they could be having discussions about how the rest of us somehow have to live with less or. Uh, we're 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 living beyond our means, or something like that. And you know, it's the it's the worshiping the environment. It's the it's the it's the uh, you know they worship the creation rather than the creator. It's it's a it's a false religion in many respects. It makes them feel good though, self righteous. Uh, they're better than we are. They're better than you know. If everyone would just do what they want, and it's a there's nothing new about this. Our founders, our framers of our Constitution understood this when they set this government up, that there were always going to be people to whom power and, and control of other people was central to their being, that they wanted nothing better than to scare people or to move them to do the right things. And, and, and so they designed a government that was supposed to be uh, very limited in its application to our everyday life so, to keep people like that from gaining power over over their day lives. And I guess what's happened, to be honest with you, Zeb, is they've slipped. We've slipped. Uh, we've turned over the keys and, and now ask them to solve our problems instead of knowing, as people uh, who live closer to land do, that the solution to many of your problems is yourself. Absolutely. Now, many of these ads that uh, Steyer put on the air, they found out that they were fictitious and basically, in just simple language, they were lying and they got pulled from various stations around the country. Uh, basically, when you look at the fact-checking and you find out what these ads are all about, is there a chance the American public is going to see through this and it's going to have an adverse effect on the liberals and the Democrats on uh, the November midterm elections? Well, I, I hope so, Zeb. I mean, you know, lying is nothing new to politics, but I've never quite seen anything as bad as it's gotten lately where people will just boldly stand up 
in front of a press conference or run a commercial that doesn't have any application whatsoever to facts. And, you know, for people to be able to make their minds up, they should be at least presented with the facts. And so I think we've all seen a lot of lying going on. Um, and uh, parsing of words, and mm-hmm. call it what you want. But in essence, what they've, what's very interesting is that his group uh, that's pouring money into these, because he, the, the 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 number one thing he wants is to keep uh, Senator Harry Reid in control of the Senate because he's been able to stop anything. Uh, from going forward in the Senate, and, and that includes any bill that the president might have to veto, which would make him claim responsibility for it. So anytime we pass a bill to, you know, get the Keystone Pipeline, uh, put some people to work building that or, or have some more energy development here, or you, you name it, they come up with, or even to stop the EPA from, you know, telling you that you're back... Uh, the back 40 isn't yours anymore. Um, that Those sorts of things die in the Senate, and so that's what he's trying to do. So he's running around the country. He picks wherever it is that uh, it throws up a commercial that has that have been proven wrong and and uh, declared to be wrong. And, boy, I'll tell you, as you know, I mean, the, the media business is a tough one. You don't want to give up commercials, but when somebody lies in them, you have to. You know, Dan, let me ask... They pulled his commercials because he's just lying. Yeah. Try another angle, um, see if it sticks. Let me ask you this part of it, and maybe this is too much of a question for speculation. But, you know, it's unfortunate, but we're being force-fed and spoon-fed the fact that Hillary Clinton will be the uh, reigning force of the Democrats uh, for the nomination for president. Nobody has heard, maybe you have, I haven't, I haven't heard her speak out on energy, I haven't heard her speak out on, on our oil, I haven't heard her speak out on natural gas, I haven't heard any of her policies regarding energy have you uh, i have not said I mean, it's a good it's a good question i mean i do know that when she was secretary of state uh the state department came out with its recommendation that obama ignored that said that we should build the keystone pipeline now she didn't write that she probably didn't even call the shots on it um, I, I think it'd be hard. We'd be hard pressed to find anybody who's been as anti-energy as as Obama, which is fascinating, to be honest with you, because we're, you know, we've talked about it before. We're now breaking records for new energy production in the United States, but it's not because of anything he's done. It's actually because there's a lot of private land, and he hasn't been able to stop it there. So, um, uh, but. But clearly, I mean, until we've got a situation where Greenpeace and Sierra Club and the rest of these crazy left-wing groups uh, uh, are no longer controlling our energy policy, because that's who it is. Yeah. I mean, that's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's coming right from them. They're, they're basically writing a script for the White House. Until those people are out of control of it, um, we're just going to see more and more and more of whatever's going on. And if, if she saddles up to those folks... Uh, and listens to them for energy advice, um, you know, they'll run it right into the ditch. And the other side of that equation is, Dan, I'm surprised that there hasn't been from the other side of the aisle uh, more attacks on a lack of energy program against, uh, directed against uh, this, the Senate Speaker and also the President and also looking ahead to 2016. What's the matter with the Republicans for not making this a major issue? Uh, well, I fault them a lot for it. I think they get tired of beating their heads against the walls. Zeb. A lot of times people do back here. They have passed a lot of bills. I mean, I can't tell you how many times they've passed a bill saying that we ought to build the Keystone Pipeline, and then it sits over there in the Senate, and, and, and Harry Reid won't give it the time of day um, because he controls. He's a one-man Senate. That's basically what it is. So whoever votes for him to be the Senate Majority Leader is voting for someone to continue to stop anything from going ahead. So I think what's happened is Republicans, are, they see what's going on. I mean, we, we can't ignore what's going on in, the, in those parts of the country where energy uh, production is increasing and it's breaking records and there's unemployment going through the floor. It's the only part of this economy right now that is actually doing well and it's helping 
uh, ironically, it's helping keep the president's numbers up because it 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 keeps unemployment lower, and you know, of course, the lower energy prices go, the better everyone is, and that promotes uh, jobs as well. But the long and short of it is, um, uh, you, you know, I think the, I think the Republicans have tried. I, I I don't think they've tried as hard as they should have, uh, just like you. But I also know that they they've seen that everything that they push over there to try to get try to get some people back to work doing energy or try to stop the EPA from doing bad things just gets just gets goes right in the dumpster. I agree. You are the best. I always look forward to being informed with Institute for Energy Research's Dan Kish. And dear friend, God bless you, my friend, and I'll be in touch with you in the next couple of weeks and have you back. Thank you, Zeb. It's my pleasure, and God bless you and your audience. All right, sir. Thank you very much. Dan Kish, very knowledgeable and tells it like it is regarding energy or the lack of. we got to do something, folks. We've got to do something. We are falling into an abyss, and that abyss uh, is being dug deeper every day by the Democrats and the likes of Harry Reid. <laughs> That's another story in itself. Hey, we better have the weather, and the weather is brought to everybody this half hour by Scarrow's Meats, 331 North Road, Jerome. They're your hometown meat cutter, and they've been that way for over 20 years. Processing facility located in Jerome, and they guarantee everything that they sell. And the number to call, 324-7657. you got to try their marinated tri-tips. Oh, it is delicious. Selling taste, one bite at a time. Scarrow's Meats in Jerome. And right now here, Michael Rogers Weather. Hey, hello, everyone. Michael Rogers is up at the ranch. Clouds and rain still with us all the way through Friday night. Scattered showers today, 18 for the high, 60 for the overnight. Low look to come out of all of this by Saturday. Sunny. And all the way through Monday. Sunny. Right now, today is yucky. Scattered showers. Enjoy the weather. It's the only weather you got. All right, Michael. Thank you very much. Right now, it's not too bad outside. Kind of nice and blue sky out the north window in my office. Weather forecast with MichaelRogersWeather.com brought to you by Scarrow's Meats, 331 North Road, Jerome. Excellent, excellent meats. You better believe it. And they've been working for over 20 years selling taste one bite at a time. Scarrow's Meats, 324-7657. Oh, by the way, real quick, I want to also acknowledge our dear friends at your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you. You know, when it comes to brakes, that's very, very important. Well, you're going to take a road trip. You're going to go down to southern Colorado. You're going to go back to the Dakotas or whatever. You want to make sure you've got a good set of brakes. Well, let me tell you, they've got the best brake value promise. Professionally trained technicians, over 30 years experience, best brake warranty, premium quality parts. Stop in. Have your brakes inspected. They give you free estimates, same day service. They are there to protect you at your Magic Valley Les Schwab tire centers. All the tires, mm -hmm. all the tires, all the front end alignments, the brake service, and of course the shocks and struts, the batteries, everything, they take care of you. Stop in and see Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, John on Pole Line in Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland in Burley, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Well, Gina, um, while the mouse is away, the cats, well, I guess that's the other way. When the cat's away, the mice will play. Yes. Yeah. I forgot my little... Deanne? Pardon me? Deanne, did Deanne just leave? No. I'm talking about you and I'm gone tomorrow. Oh, actually, tomorrow's going to be a great show, but uh, absolutely jam-packed, as usual, for yeah. Thursday. And you two ladies will have the final say. Yes, we shall for the week. But it's going to be a good time with Sharon, as always is. Yeah, I was going to say, women's power rules tomorrow. Ooh, yes. It's going to be ladies' day at the ranch. Don't you just feel like you need a scepter in your hand and you're commanding everybody to do as thou wishes? A whip would be better. 
That sounds kinky. <laughs> <laughs> Only you would take it there. No, it's just like you crack the whip and make them get it done. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Well, yeah. excuse me. All right. That's okay. um, let's see. I got a couple of public service announcements, and I got to get this in. I had some people call me, and I'm sure Gina's hit it a couple times. They're going to have the Paul Palooza at the Paul Community Park. That's going to be this Saturday, the 23rd. Right, Gina? Yes, this and Saturday, the 23rd. Mm -hmm. And it goes from 11 to 3. Correct. And live entertainment provided by Ken Mort. Hamburgers and hot dogs are going to be served. And they're going to have all kinds of drawings, too. Yes, and they're going to do a greased watermelon race as well. A what? Greased watermelon race. What is a... What in the world is that? They, you grease up a watermelon and you do something with it. You race with... I have no idea, but it's a greased watermelon. Melon race. I've never seen it before. Okay, and then they're going to have a candy cannon and mm -hmm. drawings for uh, some really, really nice prizes. Yes. And uh, for more information, call Ken Mort at 670-7268. Dog Nation's Ken Mort. Yes. Okay. Um, and then tonight, team open over at Jerome County Fairgrounds. It's uh, part of the summer series. Sign up at 6.30. Rope at 7. 3 for 20 draw pot. And I think that kind of covers everything. And then next week, we're going to be reminding you every day about 9-1-1, September 11th. We're going to be celebrating Hats Off to Farmers and Patriots Day at Ramsey Heating and Electric. Early in the morning that day, we're going to have George Mass cooking up a great big benefit breakfast right outside the front door. I know. He's going to be serving up some delicious, uh, what is it, uh, biscuits and gravy. Yep, yep. Oh, my favorite. I'll make sure you get some. Please do. I will. I'm going to take a break right now, a break, a long break. I'm going to be back literally next Monday. Gina and Sharon will handle the program tomorrow. God bless you and your family the way things were, the way things ought to be. Zeb at the ranch. Take care, everybody.